football takes the field for the final time in Honolulu. And as the sun sets on Chang's career at the University of Hawaii, he leaves behind a legacy and records for future quarterbacks to chase. Tonight, one more win will need one more game before riding away into the sunset. Welcome to Paradise, a wet, windy version of Paradise tonight as ESPN2 College Football Saturday Primetime brings you Michigan State trying to finish at 500 in 2004 against Hawaii, trying to finish in a bowl for the second straight year here in Honolulu. If they win, they will play again in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. That'll be on Christmas Eve. Welcome, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, David Dory. If they lose, however, David, then this is it. This is the last time anyone here will get a chance to enjoy the most prolific passer in big time college football history, Timmy Chang. Well, Timmy Chang has the record. He's thrown for over 16,000 yards, had his biggest game of the season last week, an upset of Northwestern. He's going to have to have monster numbers to pull off an upset tonight. And more importantly, they get that extra game. And if Tim Chang gets an extra game, a bowl game here on the island, the legend of Tim Chang will continue to grow. And Michigan State has the task of keeping the football away from Mr. Chang. Best done with their outstanding running attack. Second in the Big Ten with a quarterback, Drew Stanton, whom his coach calls a drunken sailor when he runs with the ball. But he does average 7.3 yards per carry. And Drew Stanton is the leader of this Michigan State squad. To finish 500, they've got to win this one tonight. And the best way to do that is to keep it on the ground and away from Timmy Chang. Michigan State runs it about as well as anybody in the country. Hawaii must throw, and they must throw well in 30 mile an hour wins to win it tonight. Kickoff next. Jets John L says he wants to make this trip as miserable as he can for his players. Dave, not the usual approach we're used to seeing coaches take when they come here to Hawaii. We'll see if it works tonight. No, in fact, Bill, it's the only time we can ever recall a coach not treating this as the greatest thing that's ever happened to their program. What do you suppose is going through his mind even before he knew that they would be dealing with 30 mile an hour winds? Even so, it's about 40 degrees or so nicer than Oh, say East Lansing weather at the moment. <laughs> well, what he did, he actually had his guys practicing at 11 p.m. inside the indoor facility in East Lansing with the temperature turned up as high as he could get it so that they'd be acclimated to the conditions here in Hawaii and hopefully get their body clocks on this time. Then he came over here, and I was at practice Thursday, and he was all in their face, and he was not happy. He coached it that way, and he's expecting an aggressive performance. On the other hand, June Jones at his sixth season as Hawaii head coach, as usual, has one of the top four passing attacks in the country. He has maybe for the final time a chance to uh, enjoy the work of Timmy Chang, his uh, all-time best coaching subject on the field tonight. And again, Hawaii must win to play again. It'll be on Christmas Eve against UAB, Alabama, Birmingham, already having nailed down the first bid awarded in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Six and five Warriors must finish seven and five for this not to be Chang's final performance for the University of Hawaii. And Hawaii wins the toss. They have elected to receive the opening kick. Dave Rayner, powerful leg, has it teed up. And this is such a swirling win, it's really going to be difficult from time to time to see who it benefits and who's going into it. Deep for Hawaii, Jason Ferguson emerging as a real threat. Seventh in the whack in kick return yardage this year. That one will roll out of bounds, very unlike Rayner. A flag on the very first kick will give Hawaii even better field position. Our referee. Rule ball replaced on the 35 yard line. First down. Frank White. And Chang and the Warriors. This time last year, he was dealing with being booed, being benched, 
And bouncing back, and did he ever? It was a really a foregone conclusion that he would break Ty Detmer's record for the all-time career passing yardage. But to do it in style the way he has done this year, according to his coach, is really the most pleasing aspect of what he's accomplished. And out of the shotgun, right to work through the air. And right at 10 yards on his first pass. Bud Light starting lineup. Brewster, when he gets a chance, very dangerous runner. They run it very seldom, but Brewster right at about six and a half yards per carry. Lots of receiving talent out there, especially Chad Owens. And up front, this is a group that's been shuffled quite a bit the last couple of weeks because of injuries, but Faavi moves back into the lineup at center, having missed the last three games with a bone bruise on his knee. So it's a little bit more their usual look with Satelli at left guard, Eaton moving from guard where he had been to tackle and Moanoa at right guard. Short toss this time. And spinning across midfield, West Kali'i Kipi, 260-pound tailback, brought down by Kevin Vickerson. And starting up front, it's a big game for the Samoan. Pecco calls it his home game. He's 2,600 miles away from home, and it's as close as they get. The linebacking core, real story is the senior Dorch who missed really most of two seasons with a horrendous leg injury earlier in his career. And the secondary will definitely be challenged, that almost goes without saying, with Hayes, Smith, Harmon, and Maples. So completions to Jason Rivers and West Ali'i Kipi to start the night for Timmy Chang. And on second down at four, again shot over the middle. This one tipped up and almost intercepted. So really, I think it's a pretty simple game plan tonight, David, for Hawaii. Keep the ball away from a Michigan State running attack that no one believes the Warrior defense has really a prayer of controlling tonight. Yeah, and over the years with the run-and-shoot offense, that's been a knock on the run-and-shoot offense that you don't keep the ball away from a, a ball possession offense on the other side of the field. So many passes, and when a team in the run-and-shoot scores, so we take a look at the original architect of the run-and-shoot offense, Mouse Davis, uh, when you score, you usually score quickly, and you get the ball back in the hands of the opposition. The third down toss for the sideline is incomplete. Intended for Rivers. The Wax third leading receiver. Coverage over there by Jaron Hayes. And the Spartans allow only one first down before forcing the punt. And Akeem Shabai drops back deep for Michigan State. One thing you'll notice that there'll be numerous throws like the one we just saw in which it does not look like the quarterback and the wide receiver are timed up. The wide receivers have to interpret in this offense. The run and shoot involves a lot of decision making by receivers as they judge the coverage. Kurt Milne plays into one nicely. And this one will be fair caught about the eight yard line by Shabai. 46 yarder by Milne. Michigan State pinned deep in its own end as the Spartans get their offensive uh, show going for the first time. And the sophomore, Drew Stanton, every bit as much a running threat as he is a passing threat. Two state titles in high school, Harrison High, Farmington Hills, Michigan. His unavailability early in the season after injuring a knee in the Alamo Bowl last year, playing special teams, really told a great deal of the Michigan State story this year. Had they had him every game, they think there's no way they'd be five and six. From his own end zone on the roll, a sliding attempt by Jeremy Scott, and he can't hang on at around the 30. The rest of the Bud Light starters for Michigan State. Teague going about 75%. He's had a bad case of the flu, and DeAndre Cobb and J.U. Colcrick will get a lot of work at running back. Trannon will play basketball once the football's finished up here with Brown, Scott, and Randall, and up front doing the blocking, Wheeler, Cook, Morris, Whitaker, and the best of that bunch, Sean Poole, senior from Flint, first team, all Big Ten in his finale tonight. Crowd probably better than expected, 30,000 plus they felt would be here, they're being heard. And the run to the 15-yard line by Cobb, the senior from Las Vegas. Hawaii's defense is uh, not one that Michigan State should fear at all against the run. They're dead last nationally, in fact, against the run. So this group 
will be under the microscope tonight. Moe leads the linebackers. And in the secondary, Ella Mimian, one of the best in the country, certainly one of the best, making first team all whack again, native of Nigeria. Looking for the corner, DeAndre Cobb. And they will mark him out. It would appear right at the first down marker at the 18. One of the things June Jones emphasized in our meeting with him, if we can get these guys stopped a couple of times early and they're inches from getting it done here, and it appears he will have the first down. This has not been a good tackling defense, and we just saw not getting off blocks as well as they might. What Michigan State feared is the fact that the Hawaii that plays here in Honolulu is a completely different team than the one that goes on the road and gives up scores like 69 to 3 to Boise State. Juggling catch by the tight end Eric Knott, the Detroit senior, with his 18th grab of the year. 17 yards per catch. He's a tight end who is a deep threat, and in fact, the best deep threat statistically on the offense. And this one will come back. Jason Randall normally the starter more of a run blocker and not is a real weapon when Stanton goes to the air. Holding on the offense number 72 10 yard half the distance to the goal remains first down. And that is on the left tackle Stefan Wheeler. One thing we've seen early in this football game the effect that this wind is going to have on both passers and of course you have Timmy Chang throws the ball so well from the quarterback position but Drew Stan pretty good thrower himself 63 percent on the year really underrated as a passer and these balls are going to be affected throughout the night with the heavy winds. I'm wondering about that 30 mile an hour forecast on the give DeAndre Cobb and again a big gash through the middle into the secondary and brought down by Leonard Peters the strong safety the leading tackler for the Warriors with his 101st stop of the year. Nice blocking by this big offensive line. Good lead block by the H back. And they got about half the yardage they needed. And that looks like more than 30, Dave. Yeah. I think that's what you were saying. Wind warning flags are out. Second down and nine. The good news is the rain has stopped. It was coming up pretty hard half an hour before the opening kick. Shabai fighting and finally goes down. Carried the tackler about 30 yards on his back. Leonard Peters just refused to give in. We did receiver a year ago and the 26th time he's called on this year. Leonard's making every tackle. We've got him down for four tackles already. I don't think we've had but about six plays. Shabai makes it a third and three. Line of game is 29 in his first Michigan State possession of the night. Jeremy Scott went in motion. And on the option keeper, no chance for Stanton Berry. Stanton, the Spartans' second leading rusher, 611 yards, better than seven yards per carry, but Tony Ockpon rides him down. David, he never thought about pitching that football. He had the pitch back. Well, and, and he's got the pitch back all the way. Stan's going to come out. He's going to come down the line. And he makes a decision, as you said early, Bill. You know, Stan's running ability. You talk to the offensive coaches from Michigan State. His running ability really sets up all the weapons on this offense, including the running backs behind him. And on that play, not a great decision to eschew pitching that ball wide. Timeout called by Hawaii, 10 minutes and 43 seconds. Each team has had a possession of the nation's leading punter, Brandon Fields, about to be called on with that to deal with. Get a wireless laptop with technology designed for lightweight. Make sure it has Intel Centrino mobile technology built in. Every night in home workshops, there are people creating. These are the people Dremel makes tools for, like the new 400 series XPR with new high performance attachments and greater control. The Dremel XPR turns spare time into time well spent. 
scoreless in the first quarter. You know, you could say a number, and uh, in the case of Timmy Chang, 16,268 yards. That is the up-to-date career passing total. Well, the number may be better to understand when it's illustrated. And a very low punt by Fields. Brought back by Chad Owens, maybe the best in the country. Four touchdown returns this year. And the Spartans have him cornered and corralled and out of bounds at 37. Here's another way to look at it. 16,000 plus passing yards. 13,796 feet, the height of Mauna Kea, tallest volcano in Hawaii. Or you can look at it this way. You can drive across the entire island of Molokai or <laughs> the nine miles from here at Aloha Stadium to the most famous spot here on Oahu, Diamond Head. Well, Bill, I tried to compute my yardage at UCLA, and it barely got me from campus down to Westwood Village. I think I made it down to the In-N-Out Burger. 9.2 miles in his career. Chang chased, lucky to get that one off. As the pressure came from Terrell Dorch, the bandit, outside linebacker. But the good thing for Chang is, if he's going out tonight, he's going to go out having been coached up by our own David Dorn. <laughs> yeah, Timmy uh, ended up doing the coaching, I think, for the better part of our session together. We will uh, enjoy some excerpts of the conversation you two had yesterday. It's almost impossible to sack him. He's been sacked only once out of every 57 pass attempts this year. The offensive line is extremely well coached by Mike Cavanaugh. Does a great job with these guys. Kaliki Tipi bounces off the first two tacklers, still ends up losing a yard. Finished off by the middle backer, Ronald Stanley. We hear so much about the passing game here at Hawaii. But as you said earlier, Bill, they're very effective when they run the football. Kaliki Tipi, you know, he averages about five yards a carry. And you have Brewster, 6.2 yards a carry. They've only had 152 attempts from the tailback position coming into this game, and yet they have close to 900 yards on the season. Well, when their offense is, is perking the way they want it, they, they run and pass. They just throw it a whole lot more than they than they uh, pass, than they uh, run. I knew I could say that. Dust Devils all over the field. Conditions worsen. Going deep for Comine and way overthrown. Pretty well covered by the free safety, Jason Harmon. Outgoing senior from uh, Ironton, Ohio. And the offensive uh, ranks for Hawaii, first in the WAC and top three in the country with the pass and dead last with the run, but it's not because they can't run the ball, Bill. It's because they choose not to run it very well. That's often. right, and June says we throw the ball so much. If we're 50% completion, our offense works. Normal offense is not so. You gotta have over 60. They run it about six yards per carry, so they chose to feature that. It will be anywhere near last. Kyle Brown. Turns it upfield, big return across the 40. 44 on the kick. Brown brings it back 20. And Stanton has much better field position to work with. Second time, he takes command for the Spartans. Stuart Scott and the gang recap the NFL weekend and get you ready for Monday Night Football on Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. That for the kids? Yeah, I just got him some sweaters. <laughs> I just got us all on the Verizon. Floater battling in the wind to bring it down at the 33-yard line. Kyle Brown right after his fine punt return, 26 yards on maybe the toughest pass he's ever had to track from Drew Stanton. Now, Bill, the ballistics on this ball, the spiral, look how the ball comes apart on it. I would call that unballisticated. <laughs> that was not a very good ball from Stanton, but... Sometimes ugly gets it done. But you see what Dave Baldwin's doing, the offensive coordinator for Michigan State. He's crossing up Hawaii by throwing the football on rundowns. On the roll right. Would have been uh, plenty of room had he chosen to keep it himself. Instead, a strike to Shabai. A game Shabai, the coaches look at as their most talented receiver, injury prone. Makes him a bit of an underachiever. 18 yards on that catch. Now that was a lot better ball on the move. Yep. You notice he was running to his right. When he made the poor throw, he was running to his left over here. But his receivers are really helping him with some big time catches. They look like the passing team right now. Not bothering the Spartans a bit. First and 10 to the 15. And 
And hello, J.U. Colfrick. The redshirt freshman brought down by Ikaika Alama Francis. And let's check in below with Alex Flanagan. Hey, Dave, you guys can see how windy it is down here. Well, there's big wind gusts. When that happens, there is all kinds of debris. I don't know how much you guys can see it from where you're at, but there are plastic bags. We just saw a set of balloons on the field. Debris whirling all over the place. Little dust devils, if you will, of debris kind of coming across the players. Might be a bit of a distraction. No way to clean it up with all this wind. Nope, that's not going to happen. Flag on the play, and uh, the indication against Michigan State will be declined. Bill, we've done, uh, what, half a dozen games here. We've seen every type of condition there is, or so we thought. Lots of rain, lots of sunshine. We've seen it very hot. This is as cool as it's been, almost jacket weather in Honolulu, but we've never seen wind conditions like this. We had it almost like this in 97, though. Notre Dame was here. It was almost like this. On second down. Looking left, throwing back right, wide open, not, and the tight end leaps to the end zone for a spectacular touchdown. What a marvelous job of leadership by the guy that John L. Smith says is the only real leader on this football team, quarterback Drew Stanton. Now, and the movement by Stanton really set up this play. He sold the whirl out to the left on the right side. And his big tight end not lined up. He just snuck out into the flat. Great execution from quarterback to tight end. And that means that Michigan State's now 31 out of 36 scores in the red zone, and that's a darn good record. They haven't done as well touchdown-wise, but they got that touch. Well, All-time leading score, Rainer, now 72 straight points after attempts. Eric Knott. Worth two more looks. Terrifically well designed play, and you can't finish it off in more spectacular fashion than did the senior from Detroit. 7 0, Smart. Snow than it is wind. Drew Stanton on the touchdown drive, 3 for 3, 59 yards, and the 15 yarder to not to finish it off. 7 0, Michigan State with 8.21 in the first quarter. And look for that to happen eight or ten times tonight. In fact, I would think we'll have to have a holder called in right from the get-go, not even mess with the, trying to keep it on the tee by itself. Numbers on the drive took him only four plays and barely over a minute to go 59 yards. Yeah, you'd think coming into this game that this weather and the wind would benefit Michigan State, the team that really moves it on the ground. But, Bill, they've come out, and Michigan State's throwing it all over the park. Yeah, they're throwing unballisticated balls, but that last one had a nice spin, didn't it? <laughs> that was a tight ball. So with the aid of Kyle Brown as a holder, this kick returnable from the three. Ferguson, who they hope is the Chad Owens of the future, 21 on the return. Let's look at the score again. A great execution. Stan's going to come out on the move, and watch not here. He's going to get lost on the block and then sneak out in the flat, Bill. That's right, and not has not been John L. Smith's favorite guy. They've had a few differences with off the field activities, but this is a sure way to win your way back into the good graces of the coaching staff by performing on the field. And right here, Knott's going to really sell it and then come inside. And Stanton, with his movement to the left, really established some movement from the linebackers and the secondary for Hawaii. And Landon Kofensis has left a bit of his clothing on the field. It's blowing around with the paper. Chad Simon, meanwhile, being tended to the injured Spartan. Senior from Saginaw, Michigan, helped up. That's one of the weirdest feelings in football. When you think you're going to collide with a great big guy, Kofensis is coming across there. He's going to hit not. You try to stop him at the three-yard line, and you, you throw yourself, and he just hurdles you. Yeah, That's I mean, a weird feeling with the big guy's a heck of an athlete. Well, Bill, you don't expect a six-foot-three, 250-pounder to you know, pull a 32, 34-inch vertical on That's you. That's what he line. did. It was impressive. Timmy Chang so far outdone by Stanton, who is four for five, 65 yards in a score. Chang, two for six, just 17 yards. And those... Two completions were on the first two snaps by his Warriors. Now Michael Brewster goes to work. And met hard after a gain of three. Hawaii's rushing leader, senior from Houston. 
tackled by Greg Cooper. I'll tell you this, David. John L. was worried about his guys coming out and playing with intensity. He's not worried about that anymore. No. And Both sides of the ball, they're getting after it. They are. They're winning the battle up front. And there's Hawaii you know, implementing that run and shoot attack early. But uh, this defensive front for Michigan State has shown up to play. June Jones with the call ready on a second and a long five. With three wideouts on the near side. And another gift to Brewster. Open side left. Plenty of room. First down to the 40. Good call against the Spartan alignment. And Jaron Hayes with the tackle. A gain of 12 for Brewster. I keep hearing that this coach, Mike Cavanaugh, the offensive line coach, does a good job. He's had five players drafted in the last five years. You can see why. Yes, Michigan State's very aggressive. This time, the O-line took advantage of the aggressiveness. Tala Esera, the left tackle, making the key block. So a first and 10, courtesy the runs by Brewster, formerly a walk-on at Tennessee. Transferred here, and in his career, has averaged 6.4 yards per carry. This time, slips for a loss of about five after the catch made on the swing pass. He'd have been better off dropping it. Jason Harmon quickly jumping right there on Brewster. And it's easy to spot. Domata <laughs> Domata Peco. Peco, yeah. You know what he says his biggest problem is? Split ends. He said, I have split ends. <laughs> well, obviously. You know, but he, shot this. he needs some, um, what is it, conditioner that you put yeah, on here? Yeah, a little conditioner, and, and the 30-mile-an-hour winds don't help a lot either. He has 30 friends and relatives who have made the five-and-a-half-hour trip some 2,600 miles from Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. Felt like going coast-to-coast coast in the continent U.S., but that's as close as he will get to a home game. Intended for Gerald Welch, he juggles and drops. And third and 14 facing Chan. Now this run-and-shoot offense has been around for a long time. June Jones... Way back in the mid-70s, was a quarterback at Portland State. And really the kind of the inaugural teams of the run and shoot. And what the run and shoot is about is four wide receivers, two slots, two wide receivers on the outside. And the wide receivers go out in the secondary and they read the secondary along with the quarterback after the snap of the football. It can be very tough for a secondary to see for the first time in a season. Uh, 15 years ago, David, it looked like it might take over college football. That never really happened. As another incompletion intended for Welch at midfield. Why do you think it, it for three, four years, especially as run by the University of Houston, uh, took over the country and then fell back? Well, and you look at the effectiveness that, that, that June Jones has had, you know, that has with this run and shoot offense over the last, you know, five, six seasons. And I think, I think the big knock on it is you cannot possess the football. You can't work the clock and you have trouble keeping your defense off the field. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing on the other side of the coin, there's been some great success with this offense at the college and pro level. Flag is down on the punt by Mill. No chance for Shabai on the return. But the marker happened right at the time of the snap. Punt goes 36. And against Hawaii. I mean, Bill, we look back and remember the success that Warren Moon had with the Houston oh, Oilers, yeah. Jim Kelly with the Houston Gamblers. On the kicking team, number 45, that penalty is refused. First down. T.J. Moy, guilty party. Michigan State likes it where they have it. Up 7 nothing, And they have it at their 28 when we return to Honolulu. Tonight, Michigan State outpassing Hawaii 65 to 13. Total yardage 87-30 Spartans. Last time they had it, four plays and a little over a minute to make it seven to nothing. They take over first and ten at their 28. And the run by Cobb, who got the start for the flu-ridden Jason Teague tonight. Cobb, senior from Las Vegas, off we, tackle for about three. We met with Hawaii defensive coordinator George Lumpkin and. We asked him the key to tonight's football game. He said, hey, you better have enough people in the box against Michigan State. And I think that Michigan State has done a good job here early of turning that against Hawaii. They've come out throwing the football, and, and Stanton's been very effective. And John L. Smith's offense has some elements of the run-and-shoot theory, does it not? Absolutely. 
Second and six, play fake. Stanton will keep and get nothing. Met hard, head on by Watson Ho'uhule, the middle linebacker. That was a heck of a open field tackle against a good runner. Well, as accurate as Stanton is with his arm, equally lethal with his legs, averaging 7.3 yards per carry as Michigan State's second leading rusher. 611 yards coming into tonight. And the Hoosiers and the Illini, the Badgers, lots of victims can testify to his dangerous legs throughout the Big Ten. A marker and I think a whistle before that snap as the pass was intended for Jason Randall. Ball start on the offense, number 79. Ten yard, five yard penalty. Remains third down. And that's on the right tackle. First team all Big Ten, Sean Poole. Well, Bill, uh, Dave, you mentioned you know, some aspects of the run and shoot offense that are incorporated into Michigan State's offense and we all remember John L. Smith at Louisville. Four wides, five wides, spreading things out, but you won't see Tim Chang run the football like Drew Stanton does. With the mark off, a third and 11. Over the middle and a crowd and brought in past midfield by Aaron Alexander at the Hawaii 48. Win what win, says Drew Stanton. A strike of 46 yards. Well, this is a beautiful ball in these kinds of conditions. A half roll to the left, gets that right foot planted, and he delivers that ball on a line. That's a corner route, and he places that ball right on the spot. And for you offensive line people, that was great protection. Sprint protection, everybody reaching to the outside. Look at this, wide open left side on the naked boot. And after the 25-yard completion, they will mark him out around the 30 and a skirmish now on the Michigan State sideline where two of the Warrior tacklers are led away before it gets nasty. 17-yard keeper by Stanton. And Alex, I hope you're not anywhere near that. I'm away from it, Dave. Hey, listen, Drew Stanton is only throwing with his shoulder 85 to 90 percent. May require surgery after the season. Stanton separated his shoulder at the end of October and will decide after this game whether he should have surgery. Michigan State is counting on a healthy Stanton though next season. Coaches, as you mentioned early, Dave, said that him missing spring and preseason football was largely responsible for their slow start to the season, so they can't afford to not have him healthy next uh, season, Dave. Injured entering fall camp. Injured at the end of last year and more flags and whistles Five right on the snap. Ball start, offense number 76, five yard penalty, remains first down. William Whitaker, right guard this time. Now this a play ago with Kenny Patton being driven out along that Michigan State sideline and a little extra laid on him by Matt Trannon. I've heard about finishing blocks before, but that's, yeah, but that's, that's, that's a little excessive. excessive. That's, that's very excessive. <laughs> no, no place for that football. Getting the guys back over a bench. J.U. Colcrick has checked in. And Colcrick into the secondary. On a first and 15, brought down by Lamar Broadway. He gets 10 of the 15. Colcrick, redshirt freshman from Findlay Lake, New York. And the coaches say Calker is the most physical of the backs that they've got. I, I'm just really impressed with the game plan, David. This is really good execution. Dave Baldwin put together a plan that has caught Hawaii off guard, I believe, yeah, with that. the throwing to set up the run. They have, just the opposite of the, what they normally do. They have them on roller skates right now. Defensive front hoping to fool the Spartans. And they come through this time, swarming Colquitt. First man there again, Ho'uhuli, the middle backer. Ho'uhuli is the guy that made the open field hit on Stanton two or three plays ago. He's having a heck of a football game. Nice job up front to contain and hold the line of scrimmage so that the linebacker can make the penetration and make the hit in the backfield. That's what Hawaii's going to have to do consistently. Yeah, he's filled in for a featured performer, Akaika Hernan. And done a pretty good job. You know, Watson's a journeyman, but he stepped in and really stepped up his game. So Cobb returns in the backfield after a loss of two. It's third and seven. 
And they set up the screen for Cobb. Cobb inside the 20. And in the 18, first down, Michigan State. Even in a third and long, the Hawaii defense can't close the deal and 10 yards on the swing pass. And left tackle Gordon Nabilski really occupies his man on the outside and gives Stanton a little bit of a lane to deliver the football. And then a nice job by Cobb to do the rest. Impressive bit of running after the catch. Cobb uh, held out of contact because of a shoulder problem in practices this week. Team had the flu problem. It's good to be as deep as the Spartans aren't running back. Already using all three. And Cobb turning the corner. Helmet to helmet collision drives his way inside the 10. He took on Kenny Patton. And they exchange face mask paint. Got about eight yards before this hit. Listen. Your head's inside that helmet. It sounds a whole lot louder than that. <laughs> <laughs> that was plenty loud. That's as loud as I've ever heard that when they turn up the mics. And Patton might have gotten the best of that exchange. Cobb earns a playoff. He's replaced by Jason Teague, second and two. During two minutes, first quarter, dominated by Michigan State, but they continue to be their own worst enemies with five-yard nickel and dime penalties. Ball start. Yeah, take your pick, right tackle or tight end. They both move. Cool and Randy. This is a very loud stadium. It's not as big as a lot of others, but the enthusiasm, they just can't hear the snap count. They're going to be delighted with this crowd. This this may be in the 40,000 range. Oh, it's yeah. about 10,000 more than they expected. They're, and they're in it. They're into it. And you also have the wind whistling in and out of your, your ear holes combined with that crowd noise, and it can be a bit distracting for a big offensive lineman. That is the third procedure penalty on this drive, about to have its ninth snap. And they run the reverse. Jeremy Scott. Another marker down as Scott reaches inside the 10-yard line where Leonard Peters is up for the strong safety tackle. Yeah, I think that might have been Kyle Cook. And he certainly took his defensive responsibility to the ground. Yet another mark off on Michigan State. The illegal block. We're going to hear a lot, apparently, from Frank White tonight, our referee. Nice job by Lamar Broadway, number 22. Stay at home. Here's the hands on the offense of the 74. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Remains second down. The left guard, Kyle Cook, they're taking turns, and I think all five offensive linemen now have been called for a penalty. Well, maybe not the center, Chris Morris, everybody else. Well, and, he, and here he is right here, yeah. and he's going to take his defender to the ground. Yeah, that's Lamar Broadway who did a nice job of staying where he was supposed to be. He was supposed to play the reverse, and he, he drew the foul. It looked like a pretty solid block to me out on the perimeter. At some point, the Hawaii defense has got to take advantage of all this help. Second and 14, they run Teague. Teague with the cutback is inside the five. No flags for a change, and it's first and goal Spartans at the three. We heard June Jones compliment John L. Smith and his offensive package. He said they have a marvelous offensive scheme, and here's a page out of June Jones's playbook. The jailbreak screen, he loves to call it, but so does John L. Yeah, great block on the outside by Randall, the third tight end for Michigan State. Colfrick powers his way in. Touchdown. 14 0 Michigan State with the point by Rayner about to come. A dominant Spartan first quarter. And the big 235 pound native of Liberia, Colcrick, doing the honors from about two and a half yards out. Boy, with all the damage they did to themselves with Markoffs, Michigan State still overpowers the Hawaii defense for the second straight possession. And they have outgained the Warriors 185 to 30. There's 73 straight point after. Successfully kicked by Rayner. 14-0 it is with a minute 31 in the quarter. 
Well, Bill, I think that Michigan State has done a terrific job with misdirection early in this football game, not escaping out into the flat on the first touchdown, the end around. They come back with a screen pass, fake the screen to the right, come back to the left, pick up the big first down inside the five. Michigan State is using the aggressiveness of the Hawaii defenders against Hawaii. And then when they got inside the five, they did something that has given Hawaii trouble all year. Watch them pop out of the huddle, quickly run to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball on a quick count. The Hawaii players are barely in their stances when the ball is snapped. They aren't ready to take the charge of the offense, and the touchdown by Calker is a walk-in. Really good offensive execution from the Michigan State unit. And I think Coach Smith got his desire. He got the attention of his men, and they're here to win a game and not to mess around. I got a uh, terrific halftime piece coming up about uh, Calkrick and his upbringing in Africa. Worth sticking around for. College football is uh, about the least challenging thing he's had to deal with in his life. So 14 0 Michigan State. Turn man, Jason Ferguson cannot find an alley, and he's brought down to the 13 yard line. Sunday night, Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, Mark May, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet break down all the bowl games, including the BCS game, on the College Game Day Bowl Selection Special presented by Outback Steakhouse at 6 Eastern, 1 Hawaii time. One more question to be answered, and that is. Who will play Alabama Birmingham here on Christmas Eve in the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl? Won by Hawaii over the University of Houston last year in memorable triple overtime fashion. Hawaii must win this one to get back. A loss leaves them six and six and bowlers going deep, overthrown. Finally, with a man running free to Timmy Chang, Gerald Welch, and Timmy Chang cannot find his rhythm here in the first quarter. Well, we talked to the defensive coaching staff for Michigan State, and they said Timmy Chang is not good on the run throwing the football. And if you get pressure in the pocket, you're going to force Timmy Chang to move. I think that's created some problems for him early in this football game. And what we can see from that package that we just watched is that the protection is breaking down. The O-line's struggling. They've had a couple of guys that have been injured that have just gotten back. Faavi, the center's one of them. He got beat very quickly on one of those shots. Kevin Vickerson, number 91, in on the quarterback. This time, with time, and a strike, and a first down at the 26-yard line to Welch. Well, that's Timmy Chang for you right there. Ball comes out quickly, sitting in the shotgun, and throws the ball with deadly accuracy. And Bill, so important to throw a tight spiral in these wins and both of these quarterbacks have exhibited the ability to spin the ball through the wind here early this evening. I think Timmy Chang throws in it a lot because they practice in these conditions and there's always some kind of wind when you're this close to the ocean. But tonight even for Hawaii standards is well above the door. Little swing pass and can he keep he? It's maybe two. Quick reaction by Terrell Dorch. I think the fact that Terrell Dorch was a running back for most of his life, and he was a very highly recruited running back before he had the serious injury and was asked to move to defense, he feels things and smells things out because he was over there on the other side of the ball, and he was right on the money that time. Their second leading rusher last year, back to defense this year, he had a medical redshirt year in 2002 because in October of 2001, one of the most horrific leg injuries you'll ever see in football. Two broken bones in his right leg. Two surgeries. He was laid up in the hospital in Madison, Wisconsin, 16 days before he could finally make his way home. And Chad Owens finally gets in. Some first quarter action. His first catch. About nine yards. But the Dorch injured so severely that the doctors shot him up with morphine right there on the field. It was uh, so obvious the agony he was in. There was one of the trainers, personnel for Wisconsin, trying to tell the doctor, you're not licensed to do that in this state. And the doctor said, I see misery, and I'm going to take care of it, license or no. And Dorch 
has taken care of an amazing comeback. Michigan State is taking care of Hawaii. 14-0. Second quarter, 14-0 Michigan State. You would think it was Drew Stanton who holds uh, all the passing records based on the first quarter, and not Timmy Chang. But, David, you got to spend some time with him. What were your impressions with uh, the up-close contact you had with him? Well, before I visited with him, I knew it was Timmy Chang's record, throwing for over 16,000 yards, number one passer all time in the NCAA. And when I was done, I realized it was Hawaii's record. I mean, this is really part of the island, the state of Hawaii. And I think everybody, he's allowed everyone on the island to share in that record. Well, and I think we've seen some of the evidence of your coaching out here tonight. <laughs> well, if there's going to be evidence, it needs to heat up a little bit here. Six of 13, 36 yards. On third and one, they run the big 260-pound tailback, and Kali'i Kipi slams his way for plenty more than the one he needed. I was standing at practice with Mouse Davis, one of my favorite folks, and one of the legendary coaches, and I watched this guy, and I said, you know what, I don't think I would tackle him. If he was coming at me, I don't believe I could make myself do it. Well, gets... Jason Harmon just found <laughs> out about it, but Jason wasn't scared. He stuck his nose in there. But... Gets, gets that pad level down. Ooh. It looks like the front fender of a Jeep coming at you. Gracious. Senior from Waianae, Hawaii, transfer from Utah's Dixie College. Throw underneath, Jason Rivers. Maybe one. We said David visiting yesterday with Timmy Chang, and uh, he enjoyed reminiscing about the record. You know, Tim, there have been a lot of great players that have played Division I football over the years at the quarterback position, and you're going to emerge as the as the number one all-time passer in passing yards. What does that record mean to you? Um, no, I. It means a lot, you know. But um, to be honest with you, I really didn't get to to really think about it and set it in right now, you know. Uh, of course, we want to keep our season as long as it can go. And uh, I've been thinking about Michigan State this whole week. And, and I'm sure after when it's said and done, you know, it's going to mean something real special to me. And a flag on Kevin Dickerson. So good for Timmy to not only have that record, but be able to tell his grandkids he wants through balls with David Dory. Yeah, right. They're going to say, David who? And is your elbow okay? In fact, Timmy Chang said that yesterday when I met him. He said, David, who? <laughs> do, do you have rotator cuff problems? <laughs> yeah, in both, in both shoulders, Bill. Don't, I would have been throwing people, left don't let people tape you throwing the ball anymore, David. <laughs> I would have been throwing left-handed if I didn't have problems with my left shoulder. That's great, though. He's, he's got humility. That's what stands out to uh, me. He is a class act, and, and, and you can spend about 10, 15 minutes with him, and you know it immediately. On second and four, well protected. And throws that one in the neighborhood of Rivers. That's one of those where uh, the run and shoot sometimes can make it look like everybody's confused. Well, Chang also uh, reminisced about the experience of being benched last year. It helped me out. You know, it made me realize, you know, how important this game is to me and, um, you know, how precious it is. And, you know, in any moment, you can lose it. And uh, I enjoy playing it at a competitive level, so... You know, kind of woke me up, gave me another another perspective. Phil, uh, any players you ever benched come back and thank you for the experience and give them, for the perspective you allowed? Owens, first down, 43-yard line of the Spartans. Well, actually, they have, and uh, it takes a special guy to understand when the coach does something like that. And June Jones says, I was just had to get his attention. He was just not functioning like the real Timmy Chang. And for Timmy to say, I actually love my coach and I appreciate the fact that he woke me up. I, and then to say it in such a um, meaningful way to David Norrie, I think speaks volumes about both the coach and the player. Well, we were here while that was going on. And to hear a, a local product that what he had meant to the program get booed by his hometown fans was just really unpleasant, unexpected, difficult to watch. And experience just uh, as an onlooker as Komine calls that in front of Roderick Maples in. But Cheng persevered, came through, and, and reacted, as he said, exactly the way June Jones hoped he would, with a different perspective, not putting so much pressure on every single snap, every single throw. 
And as everyone expected, he sure enough broke the record. And Jones thinks he will put it out where no one will ever challenge it again for a couple of reasons. Hawaii over his career has played eight, nine extra games over his four years between bowl games, between 12 game seasons, 13, 14 game seasons. He doesn't think there's going to be another quarterback who gets the number of games that Chang has had to set the record. Well, what is next for Timmy Chang? Are you looking forward to the off season and, and moving on to some some opportunities at the pro level? Definitely. Um, as a child, my, my dream was to become a professional athlete. And it didn't matter what sport it was. Uh, I just wanted I just wanted to compete and, and be out there. But um, you know, Hawaii gave me that that dream opportunity, and um, you know, I'm just anxious to take it. Sad to leave here in Hawaii, but you know, anxious to take the next step. And sad to watch that play on third and two blown up by Vickerson. All over Kali Kipi before he had a chance, and Hawaii's best penetration so far ends at the 38. Kevin Vickerson's having a heck of a night. We've got the big guy for four tackles. Derek Fahavi, who's been out injured, the uh, the fine, normally fine offensive center, is really struggling trying to block Vickerson. Dickerson's been in the quarterback's face. He's making plays in the running game. They're going to go for it. This is fourth and five. Only four times in 13 tries as Hawaii converted a fourth down. Owens slammed as he reaches behind him and can't bring it in. And Greg Cooper absolutely blasted Chad Owens. Uh, Tim Chang did not help his wide receiver out on this play and Cooper's going to deliver a nice hit. We'll be right back. I mean, I used to date these guys, and I, I wonder, why doesn't this feel right? You know, why isn't he the one? And then I met Ben. You know, it's really nice when you realize you don't have to compromise. I mean, not to compare my man to a car, but I mean, that's why I bought a Saturn. The 2005 Saturn Ion, redesigned, uncompromised now with five years six for our taco bell update let's take a look at the bcs bowl scenarios first in the rose bowl michigan texas we're now saying is the projected matchup that would assume that texas leaps over a california team that did not blow away southern miss earlier tonight utah pittsburgh in the tostitos fiesta bowl auburn virginia tech in the Nokia Sugar Bowl and the USC and Oklahoma both uh, took care of their business today and uh, would appear to be headed for the FedEx Orange Bowl. Guys, I think the best team in the country is not in the national title game. DeAndre Cobb for about once. So that, I would say, is the headline of the night because USC and Oklahoma did as expected. Let's look at our Yamaha game track. Seven to nothing on the 15 yard. Eric not catch and leap. And then on the very next drive, 11 plays, 72 yards, final two taken care of by J.U. Colcrit. And that's where we are. 11 and a half minutes, second quarter, second down and nine. And Stan going deep, wide open. Terry Love stumbles at the 17 on his way to 20 to nothing, Spartans. But that's about the only mistake Michigan State's made on offense tonight. My goodness. Now, this is an arm fake. This is an outside move. Watch the arm fake by Stanton. Holds the safety with the fake to the left side and then throws a perfect ball. There's the move on the outside. Terry Love really set up that pattern on the outside. Utilize the arm fake by Stanton. Turf monster got it. Uh, just ate him up. Reached up and grabbed his ankle. Except that's not turf. <laughs> How about the night Stanton's having from the quarterback position? Unofficially eight for nine. And winds gusting up to about 35, 40 miles per hour. Well, I just think the offensive game plan that Dave Ball and John L. Smith put together was just outstanding. Sensational. So 45 yards on the catch and run before the stumble by Terry Love. Clock issues now being discussed by Frank White referee. Michigan State averaging 10 yards per snap. 
seven yards per play better than Hawaii. Well, we bragged on the offensive line for Hawaii, and they're struggling tonight. We need to brag on the big guys for Michigan State and Jeff Stoutland, the offensive line coach there. What a fine job they're doing, knocking people off the ball, protecting their passer. But, the, but the, David, I think what's been really impressive about the way the ball's being thrown is it's thrown from all different places. All right, now we just showed you from our uh, crack researcher, Brad Edwards, who knows everything there is to know about the BCS, all the different formulas that go into it, all the different scenarios. He projects that based on Cal's performance, even though they won at Southern Miss tonight, that Texas will jump over them. They needed like three voters in the AP poll to change their minds. And his projection is, again, he expects that to happen for Texas to jump over Cal, get the fourth spot in the BCS rankings, which ensures they will get a bull bit somewhere. And in that case, they would take what would be otherwise the Pac-10 spot in the rows and take on Michigan. That would be the headline of the day with no upsets involving USC or Oklahoma or Auburn. Auburn would go 12-0 and and not have a chance to play for the national championship, and that would be headline number two. Well, and again, guys, I think the best team in the country is Auburn right now, the most complete team. I've set it down the stretch, and Auburn's not going to get to play in the national title game. I know that John L. Smith is going to vote Auburn number one. He's been voting him number two into this final week. John L. Smith has made up his mind he's going to vote Auburn in the next poll, so you never know. Well, I'm going to shock you, David. I agree with you. <laughs> I absolutely agree. I thought Auburn was the best team from about mid-season. Uh, they just have played lights out. They've done everything that's been asked of them. They've won going away against good competition. clock has been fixed. Back to work. Brandon swarmed at the 16. Big 6'6", 217-pound junior from Flint, who uh, has told Alex Flanagan he will play basketball again for Tom Izzo's crew, and they need him based on what happened to them today against George Washington. Give up 96 points. Very unlike the Spartans. Well, if I know Tom Izzo, there's going to be some extra practice and maybe some extra running after that defensive performance. Oh, he'll get out the shoulder pads and the helmets, and they'll do all their football some, drills. Some of those fun rebounding yes. drills. Second down, nine. Not goes in motion. And Stanton reverses field. Throw on the run is... Complete inside the one yard line. Brought in by Jeremy Scott, who I don't believe was the intended target. Stanton is now nine out of ten unofficially. Three for three inside 15 yards. Six out of seven, 15 to 30 yards. Watch Dan. He's going to come out and then he's going to reverse field. And this is a beautifully thrown ball. At first, Bill, I thought he was thrown to the underneath receiver. So did the underneath receiver. <laughs> Incomplete into the end zone. Intended for a frustrated Matt Walters, the tight end. But taking a look at the end of the play there, almost an interception. And I don't think that's a catch. But Jeremy Scott looked like he had his left foot on the sideline right here. Boy, that, that was not a completion. Off left tackle, Jason Teague, touchdown. Jason Teague with his sixth touchdown of the year. Fighting the flu the last couple of weeks, 75% according to his head coach. So not seeing as much action as normal tonight. DeAndre Cobb got the start at running back. Call Creek has a touchdown. Their third tailback, and now Teague into the act as well, and it's 20 to nothing, Spark. And this is worst case scenario for June Jones, not being able to stay on the field offensively and just getting worn down on defense. Rainer connects again. Michigan State has outgained Hawaii 247 to 73, and it shows on the scoreboard. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Seiko. You can tell more about a person by the watch they wear than anything else. Seiko Sportura Kinetic. And Saturn. People first. 
Latest scoring drive for the Spartans. Six plays, 62 yards in just under two minutes. They have 59 yards, 72 yards, and now 62 yards scoring marches. And again, outgaining the Warriors, 247 to 73. 21 to nothing, 932 still to go, first half. And no chance for Jason Ferguson to return that one. Now this latest score set up by was it a catch or was it not? First, was it intended for Terry Love, who got him down there before stumbling at the 17? Is the foot out? That yep. foot is definitely out. Jeremy Scott, the slot back. And the official on the spot wasn't sure, and he waited for the official to come from about the 15-yard line, who was on the sideline, who should have gotten it right, but did not. Yeah, he needed help from the line That's judge. A tough call. Unfortunately, it wasn't great help. Timmy Chang, just 9 out of 18, 52 yards. There's a good start. This drive, first down to the 31 to Jason Rivers. Let's look at it again, and this is magnified. This is the best possible look we can give you. This is forensic evidence right here. See the toe <laughs> on the line? BCI, or uh, CSI, Honolulu, right? <laughs> B on the marker. BCS, C yeah. CSI. <laughs> All the letters, alphabet soup. It would appear to be not a catch. You but guys, there's no reason to think Michigan State wouldn't have completed that march either. That just made it a lot easier. Broken. Broken <laughs> Chang, deep, triple coverage with Comine, the target. And second down and 10 coming. Chang still groping, you'd have to say, himself, Alex Flanagan. Hey, absolutely, Dave. Well, you know, Timmy Chang had an opportunity to break the passing record against Boise State. But during that game, Hawaii suffered one of its worst losses in school history, losing 69-3. to So June Jones decided that he was not going to have Timmy Chang break the record during that game. He pulled him out of the game, even though Timmy wanted to continue playing. He said that he wanted Timmy to have a good memory of it. But as Dave Norrie mentioned, he said he also wanted Hawaiians to have a good memory of it because he knew it would be a record that they remember for a long, long time. As you guys said, June doesn't think it'll ever be broken. Second down and 10. Throwing that one away. Hoping for a flag with some contact between Eric Smith and Chad Owens. They get no flag and they get another third and long. Well, they won't get a flag because the ball was uncatchable. What they could get is a holding call if the official detected holding, but I don't think that was the case either. Hawaii on third and long. 0 for 3. They've had a third and 11, third and 10, third and 14. They've got a third and 10 now. And Chang, less than 50% now. He's thrown for 64 yards. Stanton for 181 yards. Stanton, supposedly, the running specialist. Again, deep right side. Finally, single coverage and the catch is hauled in by Owens, who fights inside. The 20. It's taken a quarter and a half, but Chang and Owens, the most dangerous warriors, finally do some damage. Now this 50 is one of the, yards. This is one of the most impressive throws I've seen at the college level this year. I mean, this ball was delivered on the line. Timmy Chang took a big hit on the release. And watch Owens on the ISO here. I mean, he's gonna gear down and make a great play on the football, cuts it back inside. Look at Timmy Chain cut this ball loose, Bill. Yes, and that is the kind of spin, the ballistication that you talked about, those fancy words, but that was a beautifully thrown ball and a great catch by Owen. 50 yards, it's Chang's first completion of over than, more than 15 yards tonight. And the shovel pass for Brewster inside the five, still going at the one. We are seeing why you can never count the Hawaii Warriors out of a football game. They come at you relentlessly with this offense. And, Bill, this was more of a shovel screen. I mean, you hear about the shovel pass, but the little drop-off, and look at the big offensive lineman working downfield. That's a shovel screen. What a call. That ball is perfectly delivered. That's not easy to do when you're running one way and having to throw it back the other way with your left hand. Everybody in tight first and goal from the one. Brewster, did he get in? He got about six inches from in. Now, my question for June Jones here is if you've got West Kiliki 
That Again, big 280 please. pound guy. One more time. I can say it properly. I know you can. <laughs> Just give me a second. Just say if you have a 280 pound tailback, you use him, Bill. <laughs> Kali'i Kipi, West Kali'i Kipi, and that's the right way to say his name, is one heck of a short yardage runner. I believe I would have him in there. He is a load and he is fast. He's a pile mover. I mean, look at this, 280 pounds. You know, and, and when he was injured, he, he was, you know, he was out. And his weight ballooned to 330 pounds. This is Greg Cooper, by the way, being helped off. Well, there have not been a whole lot of 330-pound scat backs in the history of college football. Yeah, he did a great job getting back in shape. And, you know, as we said, this has been a great running offense the times they have gone to the run right, and averaging close to six yards per carry between Brewster and Kelly Ikipi. So inside of a foot to go on second and goal. And this time they are in. Touchdown, Hawaii. to be separated after the Kali Kipi touchdown now. The Spartans and Warriors twice have had incidents that thanks to the officials did not turn into full-blown brawls. You did not see a Hawaii player throw a haymaker there because they have a rule since they had a fight in their bowl game with Houston last year after the bowl game. June Jones and the administration have a rule. You get in a fight, you're out. Not just for this year, but for next year. So you shouldn't see any Hawaii player participating in fisticuffs. They absolutely have to turn the other cheek. With a good job of it tonight. Justin Ayat, second leading score behind Jason Elam in Hawaii history. 21 to 7. So much for that. Kali'i keeping from inside a foot, a fridge-like effect for the Warriors. I mean, I used to date these guys, and I, I wonder, why doesn't this feel right? You know, why isn't he the one? And then I met Ben. You know, it's really nice when you realize you don't have to compromise. I mean, not to compare my man to a car, but... I mean, that's why I bought a Saturn. The 2005 Saturn Ion. Redesigned, uncompromised. Now with five years, 60,000 mile extended vehicle coverage or a $1,000 allowance. Check out that convertible. Sweet. 3.2 liter, 200 and... 21 to seven, after the extra point, again, we had a near fight with three flags, and uh, we are now told the ejection of Clifton Ryan of Michigan State, starting defensive end. And Clifton Ryan, along with Kevin Vickerson, is the featured pass rusher up front for Michigan State. And he's one of the big stallions up front for Michigan State. And that is an early goodbye from the football game. His team's going to miss him big time against the throwing offense. Well, again, June Jones saying yesterday he flat out predicted a fight or at least the chance for a fight in this game. And Bill, as, as you remember it, after the triple overtime Sheraton Hawaii Bowl against Houston last year, almost a Clemson, South Carolina like uh, football riot marred that game. Also ejected is Jeremy Inferrera, offensive lineman for Hawaii. Well, I saw him throw the punch. He was retaliating. Yes, he got hit first, but that's what June Jones and the administration here has insisted would not happen. Even if you get hit, you walk away. Well, he couldn't do that. And there are a lot of us who probably couldn't uh, ourselves, but it's something that just has to happen in college football, and the administrations and the coaches have got to be the solutions. Frank White, the referee, has now issued a sideline warning to Michigan State. How about losing your right tackle for next year if Infer Inferrera did indeed throw a punch? Well, he did. I saw it. Ayat drives this one through the end zone. And Michigan State will start at their 20. Now, we'll watch again what led to the ejection here 
are more flags. And again, officials having to step in and keep potential fights from turning into all-out gang war. Down there. 21 on the receiving team. After this is a goal, post out. That's David Heron. Left side of your screen on the extra point. Right here. That's Clifton Ryan, 92. That's why he's been ejected. And then in Ferreira swung back at him in retaliation. So both of them got kicked out. Had a fight with Cincinnati, 2002. Fight after the bowl game with Houston last year. And it has been a, a, a real task for June Jones this year to prevent another occurrence with his Hawaii team this year. Yeah, really puzzling, too. There's not a lot of damage you can do to a football player with a straight right arm or... Well, you can break punch. your hand. Yeah, you, you can break, break your, your own hand. hand. Up against what the helmet. That's hit all you the, can do. Hit him in the helmet or the shoulder pads. With the mark off from their 10, Michigan State. First down. Another flag and whistles on the snap. Cop with the give and it'll come back. Yeah, this looked like movement early on the left side of the offensive line for Michigan State. By the snap, false start. Right side. Five yard penalty. The first down. Right guard William Whitaker. Already eight penalties against the Spartans. Hawaii has not been assessed a penalty yet. 15 runs and 12 passes. Pretty balanced look for John L. Smith. And most of the damage has been with Stanton's arm, 181. More of a Chang-like figure, and Stanton dominating the throwing alleys tonight. And Jason T up the middle for about three. There's not one of us who played up front in the sport of football that didn't take a swing every now and then. But it's wrong. It's loss of control and loss of temper. And in these days, it has a way of escalating into all-out violence, and it's got to be stopped just the way the officials are stopping it tonight. Exactly. Yeah. And because of the last two weeks, because of Pacers Pistons, because of Clemson, South Carolina, yeah. there's a whole different spotlight being shown on these uh, sports-related gang wars, which is basically what they turn into when they get out of hand. And this officiating crew has its hands full, so far preventing anything from getting out of hand. Stanton reverses field and will be marked out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Probably ran 75 yards. They'll give him 26. Monday night, 7.30 Eastern ESPN. Monday night football. A look with Monday night countdown before the kickoff at 9 Eastern on ABC. And maybe the most unpopular man in Dallas, Bill Parcells, takes the Cowboys up to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. Monday night countdown, 7.30 ESPN. Monday night football, 9 Eastern. On ABC, Bill Parcells vowing to stick with 40-year-old Vinny Testaverde. All the fans want to see Drew Henson, the former Wolverine. The Andre Cobb's turn to motor into the clear, and it's a foot race. A marker down. This may come back. If it doesn't, it's 75 yards for a score for DeAndre Cobb. But the flag is back at the 34-yard line. And if it comes back, and it is on holding, this is the ninth Michigan State penalty. And it's keeping John L. Smith's team from completely running away with this thing. Yeah, John L. doesn't agree with that call. Holding on the offense, number 51. Ten yards from the spot of the foul, remains first down. And now all five offensive linemen have been whistled at one time or another. This is the center, Chris Morris. Uh, Chris Morris, this is the best offensive lineman for Michigan State. And let's see if we can freeze it right there. He's latching on. And that is a great call. Bill? Yep, this is the kind of thing you don't get away with. The arms are extended. He's got hold of cloth. That referee's going to see you every time. Well, that's a painful admission for Bill Curry to 
a jump on the center, but right out there in the open. Almost impossible for me to admit that. Nine markoffs <laughs> against the Spartans. And hunting for room, Paul Crick as Michigan State now alternating tailbacks just about every snap. 6.30 and counting in the second quarter from uh, Aloha Stadium, which has stayed dry since uh, the downpour about a half an hour before the game. It's still extremely windy in Michigan State paying absolutely no attention to the conditions. Drew Stanton through the air, 10 of 12, 181 yards, running for 33 more. Timmy Chang just 12 of 23 for 131 yards. It was 21-0 Michigan State. Hawaii finally with the drive, sparked by a 50-yard strike on third and 10 from Chang to Chad Owens. And on a second and one and a half, Paul Crick gets about five and a half for the first. In 11 games this year, coming into this game, Michigan State had only been penalized 43 times. That's less than four a game. And here we are. We're not at halftime yet. And what do we got? Nine so far, Dave? Is that what you said? Nine for 65 yards. It could be the Hawaii syndrome. You come over, the travel, you know, the time difference. Kids want to get out on the beach. They want to get involved in some activities. Well, they've been playing football for the most part, though. They have played extremely well. Well, if Everett coached did everything he could to prevent Island Fever, whatever you want to call it, John L. Smith has done that. Over the middle, deep strike to Jeremy Scott to the 24-yard line, beating double coverage. Leonard Peters and Abe Elamimian, the best Hawaii has in the secondary, but they can't prevent 36 yards. Stanton to Scott. Well, Jeremy Scott's done a great job in the slot. This time he lines up in the left slot and just sneaks down the seam. And I continue to be impressed, Bill, with the way that Drew Stanton's ball is cutting through this win. He's just doing a great job. And that, that was not the kind of tight <laughs> zone becomes man when that guy gets in your zone. And nobody closed on the receiver. There wasn't any fake. There wasn't any pump. People wondered about the left eye injury Stanton had against Penn State. 100% of the proof is on just about every pass he's thrown tonight. Teague getting inside the 20. Yeah, a couple ejections. This game is really spicing up after the whistle. Really disappointing for me to hear, Bill, that you would ever admit to being involved in that type of thing after a snap your distinguished career playing in three Super Bowls. I'm, I'm disappointed. Well, I'm disappointed that you're disappointed. <laughs> Nobody plays up front that's just a perfectly well person. You know that. The quarterbacks are the only sane people out there. Bill, you've never shown me any signs of being ill-tempered. I'm 62 years old. <laughs> David, you keep it up, and we, we may see that. No, you won't for tonight. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Second and five. Stanton on the keep. Quarterback draw. And the 17-yard line. Ho'uhuli unloading on Stanton. Stanton has had the eye injury. Dislocated shoulder against Michigan. That is on the heels of the knee injury playing special teams the Alamo Bowl he has shown over and over his capability of coming back physically from all kinds of ailments and taking some of the hardest hits we've seen tonight kids these days talk about bringing the helmet on defense that's bringing the helmet right there Watson Hohuli middle linebacker for the Warriors sets up a third and three it's Cobb to the 16. A pickup of only a couple. And now Michigan State can decide whether they want to test Rainer's leg with the swirling winds or perhaps go for it on. It'll still be a fourth and about two. There have been times when Leonard Peters, the fine safety for Hawaii, has struggled. But tonight we got him unofficially for nine tackles. He made a nice open field tackle again. On a good back. Easy decision for John L. Smith. Going for it. Fourth and two. Teague is the tailback. Motion from Scott. Caught by Scott at the 12 yard line. Uncovered for the first down. And maybe he scores if he keeps his foot. Up. Well, he didn't use very good footwork on the sidelines and let's take another look at this reception or incompletion. Oh, that's a good call. The that's left foot. Call. 
The left foot was down before the right foot touched the line. He has the ball in his possession here. Now they are saying incompletion. Well, they blew this call too then, the other way. That was, that was a catch. That was great footwork along the sideline. And boy, John L. letting them hear it too. First guy to make the call had it right as it turned out. But he's overruled, and it's Hawaii ball when we come back. Huddle up and discuss a call. They get it right, but in this case, they didn't because the initial call was completion, and that would have been the correct call had they not gotten together and overruled the first indication. Well, in NCAA, you only need one foot. This time, he got two feet inbounds, and they have missed a couple of calls on that sideline. John the Big Ten. Lucky. He's lucky he didn't get another flag thrown on him for that. He's right. <laughs> Most officials won't let you get away with being quite so vigorous. Course, the Big Ten has gone to a new system of replays this year. Spartans unable to be bailed out by that. And they immediately have trouble again with Owens. Last possession, Chang hit him for 50. That got the first scoring drive going. And driven out near midfield this time on the first play of the Hawaii possession with 2.33 to go in the first half. Owens 27 a, yards. Owens had a monster game last week. Five touchdowns against Northwestern. Four through the air. And take a look at him in the slot here. He's going to work a great route to the outside. And what a fit by Timmy Chang on that throw. Another big-time ball for Chang. Four catches, 101 yards now for Chad Owens. Eight yards on the completion to Gerald Welch, their fourth leading pass catcher, senior from Kahuku, Hawaii. And they're at the 42 Michigan State Territory as we near two minutes in the half. The Warriors with two more timeouts to work with. This is what you don't want if you're the opposition for Hawaii is to let this rhythm get started where these little guys are running around catching balls and they'll start running away from it. After the poor start, four straight completions for Chang. He's at 173 yards on another 300-yard pace. And he'll throw passes like that that are just puzzling. Owens is open. He bounces it three yards in front of him. Yeah, at times, you know, Timmy Chang, at times, if there's a ball that he struggles with, sometimes it's those easy short throws to the outside. And he had a couple games this year, Bill, where he really struggled, and especially on the road. Boise State, Fresno State. And, and he really didn't react well on the road a couple times. But then you see him make some other throws down the field. And he looks like he's NFL ready. Well, June thinks he may function even better in a standard offense than in this kind that requires all these adjustments. Third, a very short two. And Chang again for Owens. He's slung down by Eric Smith, but he easily has the first at the 38-yard line. We're coming up on the college football game day halftime report. USC hangs on. UCLA made David Nori proud in the process, though. Auburn had a closer call than it looked like they were going to have with Tennessee in the SEC title game. And a look at the very inspirational Spartan, J.U. Colcrick, who we've seen to contribute a touchdown already tonight for Michigan State. All that coming up on the college football game day halftime report. First and ten. Chang rolling. And running out of room and throwing it away. June Jones thinks that he might be a mid to late round draft candidate. And he actually thinks this was the most surprising thing I think we heard from June Jones yesterday. He thinks a standard offense, one totally unlike the one that Jimmy, Timmy Chang has run for him, the run and shoot, will actually benefit Chang. I think that always benefits a quarterback if you got a solid run game. And they have a solid run game here at Hawaii. It's just not, you know, so much of this offense is about Tim Chang and the weight on his shoulder. Protection's gotten better as the game's gone on. He makes Owen stretch all 5-9 and works hard for about a two-yard gain before Greg Cooper comes up for the hit. And we hit the 1-0-2 mark. Really, Bill, the knock on... Tim Chang as scouts try to evaluate him is is his height six foot one I think he's got a great arm he can make all the throws the ball comes out in a hurry there have been a lot of six one guys that have won Super Bowls yeah how about Drew Brees this year Drew Brees is a, a, a 
modern um, version of those people. He's a student of the game, like Jimmy is. He's gone through some hard times in the NFL, and he's earned a chance to play this year, and now he's keeping the uh, bonus baby on the bench. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ben, people were ready to cast him out a year ago. Now he's created a, a pretty tough situation. Dave, you follow the NFL pretty closely. San Diego's going to have to come up with some pretty big money. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I, I got distracted <laughs> Feely. for a second. I, Feely. The evil eye there. I, I was sorry. asked you to repeat your question now, uh, after I regained my composure. <laughs> what was I saying, guys? <laughs> He's suggesting that you say something <laughs> nice about the Warriors. But Dave, I was getting back to my comment, if I can. Uh, Drew Brees in San Diego may have to come up with a lot of money to keep Drew Brees around now. The well, way Drew's he's getting playing. ready to be real wealthy. <laughs> well, they spend the high pick on Philip Rivers, and Philip Rivers may uh, never get a chance to take over at San Diego. Third and eight. He wides on the right side, looking there, deep, middle, caught, touchdown! Owens again, and we've got a game! It took Chad about a quarter and a half to show up tonight. Bill, I haven't seen many quarterbacks this year. We've done a number of games. I haven't seen many quarterbacks throw the ball like this. No, and I haven't seen many receivers with hands like Chad Owens. He is plucking them out of the air. He makes it look like it's nothing. That's a hard ball to catch. And that ball wasn't spinning exactly the way you'd want it to. But it was thrown where you want it. I got to make it a seven-point game. In the last game for Owens against Northwestern, nine catches, 155 yards, Four touchdowns. He also had a return touchdown. So five scores in his last game. And now seven catches, 143 yards, and this touchdown still in the first half tonight. Not only an accurate ball, but the timing on the throw. And you're right, Bill. That ball came apart on him a bit. But the arm strength, sometimes you can throw a ball that isn't a tight spiral and still put it on a spot. And that time, Chang got a great route from... It slot back Owens and delivered it right on the money. And he got man coverage. What Michigan State's been doing more and more since the front four wasn't getting pressure, they've been bringing backers. And you put Chang man to man with Owens and the rest of these receivers, Welch, Rivers, Wings, they're going to hurt you. And yes, there was a bad call, but it was at the 10 yard line. They still had to go 90 yards to score. Remember how one-sided that number was just a few minutes ago? Well, Chang has uh, finally started to get the Hawaii offense to look like itself, and even as near-perfect as Stanton has been, Tammy Chang now bringing the Warriors back with back-to-back -back touchdown drives. Remember what I said, these guys are never out of a game because they're scared of feeling. Wouldn't you be? <laughs> Chang, eight of his last 11 for 151 yards and that touchdown. And the high short kick returned by Scott. Jeremy out to the 33. 21 on the return, 50 seconds to work with. Chad Owens may have a crack at least as a return man at the next level. I think he's got a crack at being a receiver at the next level. And he's a great receiver in the slot. Very quick. Great adjustment to the ball right there. This is a guy who made 85 catches last season. And this year, you know, he's, I think he's eclipsed that 85 catch mark tonight. Came into the game with 81 catches. Guess how many scholarship offers he had? Zip, nada. He walked on here, earned a scholarship very quickly. Well, David, you're right. He's at 88 catches now for the year. This is the Andre Cobb. Who spins his way to the 42. There are all three timeouts for the Spartans to work with. They'll call the first with 39 seconds. This football game is spiced up a bit here in the second quarter. A couple ejections, some heated exchanges after the whistle, a couple controversial calls, and June Jones is liking what he's seeing right now. 
Well, be sure to join us tomorrow night on ESPN for Sunday Night Football. This week, the Pittsburgh Steelers and their Rookie of the Year candidate, probably shoe-in, Ben Roethlisberger, against the Jacksonville Jaguar team making a push toward the postseason themselves. Coverage begins with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, 2.30 Hawaii time. Down to Alex Flanagan. Hey, Dave, well, the Michigan State linebacker Clifton Ryan appears to be very disappointed after being ejected from the game. He has been sitting on the sidelines for a while, was at one point wiping tears from his eyes. Now, remember, he's a young sophomore who John L. Smith has high, high expectations of. He talks about this kid becoming one of the leaders of the team. He's actually sat him down a number of times this season and asked him to be more of a vocal leader, somebody who steps up, motivates the team, is very positive. He wants him to be a positive influence, something, though, that John L., you won't imagine, will look positively on tonight, Dave. Well, maybe the fact that he's reacted that way to the ejection is the best sign you could hope for from him. Hopefully it'll never happen to him again. Second down and one run by Cobb. The Andre across midfield and out of foot race. Only Peters there to prevent a touchdown. At the eight-yard line with 30 seconds to go, a 49-yard burst by DeAndre Cobb. Well, Bill, this Michigan State running offense, a running offense by committee, three run backs, but Cobb is the breakaway guy. He's the home run threat. Yeah, he's getting a lot of help up front. Whitaker, Poole, doing a heck of a job making big holes. First and goal, Jason Teague with a hop and a leap and reaches for the goal line. Touchdown, Jason Teague from eight yards out. Precisely what Hawaii must avoid in a game like this is allowing this team to come back and just maul them up front and ram it down their throat in the end zone with only 40 seconds left and it took them 16 seconds to get down the field and score all runs not a good sign not very good tackling and this is what we've seen before when hawaii struggled that was a case of an offensive line turning the momentum around in a football game rainer for the extra point well hawaii in this game within seven for not even 30 seconds and Jason Teague again finding the end zone. Watch the surge up front. Chris Morris doing a nice job wiping off there. 51. Sort of a little double team on the nose, and then he slides off on the, on the linebacker. Nobody home to make the hit until they get to the secondary. Yeah, Chris Morris, the big center, Bill. You know, the offensive coaches for Michigan State say he is the reason that they run the ball successfully when this offense is humming. He makes all the calls, and the centers are invariably the brightest guys on the football team. Funny how that, that is always the case. No matter the matchup we have, one of I the most said consistent, that in several weeks. One of the most consistent comments we enjoy hearing from your expertise. Mr. Morris would agree with Mr. Curry, I think. See, he's a finance major. You know, Chris would be going to go where the bucks are. Chris would be disappointed with you, Bill, if you, you admitted to him that you got involved in those fracases after the whistle. I don't think we ought to bring that up with him. Hawaii drives within uh, seven points, and it lasts until a three play, 67 yard Michigan State answer and an unreturnable kick. Warriors have one timeout, 80 yards and 24 seconds. Well, there's a reason when there is a, a team ranked dead last nationally against the run, and that's Hawaii this year, there's a reason. We have seen the reason tonight of the number one issue, not getting to the ball carrier, but figuring out how to get down the ball carrier. Well, usually this Hawaii defense plays better on the islands. It, Fresno State hung 70 points on them, Boise State 69 points, but this defense really was one of the major reasons last week they were able to upset Northwestern and keep their bowl hopes alive. Michael Brewster picks up three as uh, Hawaii will apparently hang on to the timeout, head to the locker room, and try and keep this advantage the way they expected. Six and one at home, 
0 for the road this year. They must win this one. They must come from behind and figure out a way to hold off this Michigan State attack to earn the postseason bid, the home bid here, the shirt in Hawaii Bowl, Christmas Eve, 28-14, back to Reese Davis. New Pepsi Holiday 28-14 here at halftime at Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Be sure to join us Sunday night on ESPN for Sunday Night Football this week. Ben Roethlisberger, the front runner for Rookie of the Year. The Pittsburgh Steelers take on Jacksonville, making their own push toward the postseason. Coverage begins with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. More coming at halftime from Hawaii when we return. Now through Sunday, Zales is having a diamond sale where you can save up to 50% off. Plus, take up to an extra $500 off on Diamond Store Wide at Zales, the Diamond Store. This season, give the gift of John Madden and Dale Jarrett's holiday CD. And it's only the first quarter. For a gift people will actually want, come in now to Outback Steakhouse and buy holiday gift certificates today. Circuit City store-wide sale is going on now. Hurry in today for unbeatable prices on the coolest gifts. All camcorders are on sale. All MP3 players and home theater systems are on sale, too. You'll get a free DVD player with any TV $6.99 and up. And pay no interest till January 2007 on all TVs $4.99 and up. Now at Circuit City. The Rose Bowl. New Year's Day, 100,000 fans will pack this place. Impressive number. Allstate has their own impressive number. One million. That's about how many drivers switched to Allstate last year. Enough to fill ten Rose Bowls. Why? Many of them saved an average of $278 a year. Now that calls for a parade. Championship insurance for less. That's Allstate, Stan. Are you in good hands? Just about set now for the second half, 28-14 Michigan State back here in uh, Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. They've won Ed Bill Curry, David Norrie. Good news for Hawaii. They got back in the game. Bad news is it lasted 32 seconds. <laughs> 16 seconds, wasn't it? Michigan State, when they put their mind to it, can run the football, David, as well as anybody in America. And they just demonstrated it against the last-ranked rush defense. I have more bad news. 403 yards of total offense for Michigan State yeah. at halftime. That's not a very good trend if you're a Hawaii fan. The 800-yard outburst is tough to overcome. That's, that's the pace the Hawaii defense is looking at. Started early. Three quick scores in a row by the Spartans. The hurdle by not into the end zone got him going. And then finally Chang to Owens as they get back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. 36-yard strike there. This is... DeAndre Cobb immediately after that score, 47 yards to get it to first and goal. And our Yamaha game track then saw a quick touchdown to put the Spartans right back up by 14 points. A 32 second touchdown drive after Hawaii had closed within seven. Debris all over the field, wind at least in the 30 mile an hour range, but thankfully we've been rain free since about a half hour before the game and a touchback will allow us to send us again down below to a windswept Alex Flanagan. Very windswept Dave. Well we've seen an emotionally charged first half. John L. Smith told me that you hate to see players ejected a player ejected on each team but he was quick to point the finger he said that that's what Hawaii gets away with he said you see it happen on film they start pushing and that's what happens June Jones meanwhile very disappointed with the fighting he said officials ejected both players and one on each team but did not ask them to leave the stadium so at the half he asked his offensive lineman Jeremy and Ferreira to go home Dave well not surprising that John L. Smith would have a completely different slant on the fighting issue than June Jones Cobb wrapped up for a loss First man there, Chad Kapadui, the linebacker. June Jones saying that other teams tend to try and bait his players into fights. And they, for instance, in the bowl game last year, held off 
chance after chance that the Houston players were giving his players to get a fight started until the game ended. And then helmet swinging ball lasted about 10 minutes and really marred the proceedings. A loss of three yards, second and 13 for Stanton. On the roll and incomplete, intended for a diving Aguin Shabai. On the first play, was this a fumble, not just a loss of three? Well, Drew Stanton opens up, the handoff to Cobb. No, that's not a fumble. Ball hit the ground. The minute the ball hits the ground there, the ball is down. Brown can't cause a fumble. Third and 13. Spartans go to four wide. They have outpassed Hawaii, 217 to 215. Stanton beating Chang at his own game. He'll have a flag and incomplete, a near interception. Intended for Terry Love off the hands of Lamar Broadway. Well, the flag where you would expect to see Frank White, the referee call, holding. That's yeah, going to be holding. on 81, Jason Randall, we think. Number, number 81, that penalty is declined. They'll take the result of the play, fourth down. Randall it is. Stan now passing Chang, and we, we thought it would be no contest in the run comparison, but, but that's even more domination than we would expect. 186 to 26 on the ground for Michigan State. All nine penalties against them. All five offensive linemen have had a mark off against them. Brandon Fields, nation's leading punter in challenging conditions to say the least, and that one goes 34 yards. Wow, that's a guy that averages 48 yards. Now, it's hard to believe the wind's blowing hard enough to, to affect his drop, but maybe it is as he drops the ball because that, that ball hit the inside of his foot, and that's what caused it to shank off to the left like that. Believe it or not, that is calmer than it was through most of the first half. First forecast we had a kickoff said 30 miles an hour. That might have been the minimum wind speed these quarterbacks had to deal with. Chang with all day. Timmy Chang rolled to the right, then came backside on the read once again. Owens up the slot. And look at these hands, Bill. I mean, a beautiful ball, but another great catch by Owens. This is a basic two deep coverage. Here we'll see the extra point, then we'll take another look at it. Ayat makes it again a seven point game. Jimmy Chang now nine of his last 12, 202 yards, two scores in that span, both to Owen. Touchdowns are coming by the minute, literally in Honolulu tonight. Let's take one more look. There's Owens. He's going to split the, split the middle of the field. Now, that's not a good we'll Split the middle of the field. Dorch right here, 34, is supposed to run with him. It's like Tampa Bay plays the traditional two deep. He's supposed to make the throw elevate such that the safeties can get there and he doesn't get enough depth. So Greg Cooper and Jason Harmon are left on an island. They can't make it. And the throw, David, was perfect. Yeah, that was a beautiful throw. And, you know, Dorch is not going to be able to run with Owens. And when you have a two deep safeties, they've got to gain depth. The safeties were beat as well on that play. Bringing this one out. DeAndre Cobb, big mistake. Big Ten defenses got to be thanking their lucky stars. They don't deal with Chad Owens on a weekly basis. Northwestern saw him catch nine balls for 155 yards, four touchdowns. Michigan State has seen him catch eight for 194 yards and two touchdowns, and we still have a half to play. Well, this is the first time I've seen Tim Chang with the naked eye, Bill. And I'm telling you, he is impressing me. He is making some throws down the football field. He can really attack all spots on a football oh, field. David, he only has 16,000 so far <laughs> in yardage. On the ground, Teague. 
And a good start. Michigan State last time Hawaii closed within seven, scored in three plays in 32 seconds. I don't care if he's 5'10. I mean, he's six foot one, but even if he's 5'9, 5 5'10, 5 if you can see down the field and fit the ball into seams like he is tonight, Timmy Chang, I mean, he's. I think he's going to play at the next level. Second and four. Tran is wide right. Jeremy Scott is wide left. And Stanton after the play fake goes tight end. Jason Randall on the first down near the 30. No much more for his blocking than his catching. Timmy Chang now at 256 yards on 18 of 31 after a very poor start. We've seen it his entire career. He'll have a bad quarter. He'll have a bad half. He'll end up with 400 yards. And the injured Hawaii defender is junior free safety Lamar Broadway from Corona, California. And Broadway was there as the ball arrived and just got run over. We watch at the end of the play, Jason Randall, big tight end. And look at the collision there. Broadway was leading with his helmet. That is a dangerous play. Ooh, you hate to see that. But you do like to see his uh, arms moving. His arms and hands are moving. It's the first sigh of relief that Lamar provides us. He goes 175. Randall goes 269. And Lamar up, and he'll jog it off. He's fine. Yeah, you love to see that. Looked like Broadway was turning back to make a play on the football. Didn't quite make it in time. And as a result, Broadway isn't expecting the, the contact on the helmet that quickly. It's great to see him get up and get off the football field. At the 29, first and 10. Teague split out wide right. This time it's the other tight end, Eric Knott. He's got the Spartan scoring started tonight. He's got 13 yards and another first down. Stanton's doing a great job of utilizing his tight ends tonight. Watch this. George Lumpkin, the defensive coordinator for Hawaii, has come out with calculated risk. He's going with the blitz. Man coverage, and the man can't get there. Eric Knott, too quick off the football. You can't play that far off. Landon Kavinsis had responsibility, and he was lined up the wrong place. Spinning in trouble, and just into more trouble this time is T. Now, this is what Lumpkin's doing. He's coming up and daring him. He's blitzing. He's getting somebody in every gap. He's penetrating, and the risk he's taking is man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, eight men in the box. Lumpkin said, hey, we got to get enough men in the box to get this run game. It works on this play, Bill, but really opens up opportunities for Drew Stanton in the pass game, and he's taking advantage tonight. George Lumpkin came to Hawaii and decided he liked it here. And he played two years. He's now coaching his 30th year. DeAndre Cobb with a flag down at the end of the run at the 47-yard line of the Warriors. Cobb has been the toughest nut for the Warrior defense to crack all night. If this run stands. He's over 100 yards. Uh, would be at 110 yards. Coming back, holding again Michigan State. They now have all 10 penalties in this game. Number 18, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, remain second down. 18, Terry Love, the wideout. All 10 penalties on John L. Smith's part. John L. is disgusted with this, but he does have his hand outside, and he's got a piece of that cloth, and they're going to call you that left hand's outside the shoulder pad on Elamimian here. Yeah, that's really a needless penalty downfield. Cobb was just finishing off the run. Cobb looks healthy, coming off the hip flexor problem. Had a nice burst on that play. Second out, 13. And the screen set up for Teague. Warming Jason Teague, he'll lose a couple. Elamimian and Kamaka Vivoli are there for the defense, ranked 114th, fourth from the bottom overall, dead last against the run, and 112th in scoring defense. It is it's far from George Lumpkin's best unit. He would admit that. But he's been here for a reason. He has served five different head coaches for the University of Hawaii.
They gave Keith the line of scrimmage before he was thrown back, so it's third and 13. And they run the draw to Cobb. Not for much, though. Cobb finally brought down by Elamimian. And Bill, they went back to the sprint draw. And that was the play call on the hold yep. the by Terry Love. Misdirection sprint draw, which has given Hawaii a lot of trouble. But this is an inspired defense right now. And that's the way they're going to have to play all the time. And Owens back to return the punt. They have never lost when he's returned for a touchdown. A 76-yarder against Northwestern New York with his four touchdown catches. This one backs him up to the corner at the 12-yard line, and he starts picking his way through white jerseys. He's scary. <laughs> you don't want to try to tackle this guy in the open field. you got to have a bunch of white shirts to get it done. 45 on the kick, 12 on the return for Owens. 28-21, Michigan State. Twas the night before Christmas, ESP2's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Suzuki. More and more people are making the smart move to Suzuki. Well, the Michigan State campus has the famous Sparty statue. Honolulu has a few works of sculpture of its own. 28-21, Michigan State once led 21 to nothing. First possession, one play, 51 yards, touchdown. This starts with a first down strike of a dozen yards to Jason Rivers. Timmy Chang, midway through the first half, had Hawaii averaging just three yards per play. They are now averaging seven and a half yards per play. Very rocky beginning. Couldn't have his rhythm from down to down, certainly not from series to series. But finally, he and Chad Owen started to hook up. And on the first play of the second half, 51 yards to make this a one touchdown game again. Yeah, Timmy actually showing some emotion. Yeah, things get. I don't know that I've seen him do that before. Things get a little bit more fun at the position when you start hitting balls oh, down the middle of the field. He's so calm. Well, Gripe throws back deep middle and overthrown. Rivers with a couple of steps on Jaron Hayes. That was one of those situations in the run and shoot where I think the quarterback and the wide receivers weren't on the same page. Remember, the run and shoot, wide receivers release. They read the coverage for June Jones in this run and shoot offense. Quarterbacks and wide receivers have to be on the same page. That was one of the rare occasions tonight where they were not on the same page. And June says, we look really bad running a play, but we'll run it very well later because we'll run the same route 12 times in a game. And a running team doesn't have that luxury. It's really an interesting concept. Also interesting, Bill, in practice, when passes are thrown badly, way off target, never says a word. We're going to have no. another mark off. No, this, might, this might be the first penalty of the night against Hawaii. Well, and and, and Mouse Davis was originally the, the architect of this offense. There's a shot of Mouse. Coach June Jones back in the mid 70s. Neil Lomax played for him. That goes against Michigan State on Kevin Vickerson illegal signals which caused the Hawaii line to raise up early. Well, this was an offense. Take a look, John L. Smith can't believe. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's something that happens all the time and it's almost never called. What happens is the linebacker will get down there and start barking out the snap count of the offense. It's against the rules but the officials almost never call it. And I will tell you that Hawaii has a very predictable snap count. They run from the sna same snap count most all the time. Second down five at the 40. And Chang having to run for his life and throws it away. Aloha Stadium, wind swept. And uh, for a time, very somnolent place until Hawaii finally jump started the offense midway in the second quarter. Bill Curry, David Dory, and Alex Flanagan. Dave Barnett. This has turned into a, a game, a real shootout. Michigan State over 400 yards at halftime. Timmy Chang started just 9 of 19. He's now 19 of 34 for 278. And Drew Stanton from Michigan State has almost matched him yard for yard. He's 14 for 19, 242 yards. Spartans have run for 200. That's their big end, as expected. 
Chang over the middle, dropped. Very uncharacteristic. Owens at the 45. Yep, and Chang got exactly what he wanted. It was man coverage with a free safety, and Owens just never does what he, you just saw him do. This is a flat-out drop from it with a great throw, David. And how about the movement in the pocket, the way Timmy Chang is sliding that, on that last play, slid to the left to create some room, a seam to throw the ball. I mean, that is a beautifully thrown football yep. by Chang. So Kurt Milne on the punt. Look, both punters are doing pretty well against this incredible swirling wind. Shabai upended at the 25. 41 yarder off the foot of Mill. It's hard to drive more than a mile or two on the coast of Oahu without a scene just like this. Capital One, Alaska. Despite the drop on the last series, eight catches, 194 yards, two touchdowns. He may have a shot at the single game record for Hawaii, which is 285 receiving yards by Ashley Lalee three years ago against the Air Force. Would have had a better shot if he made that last catch. Yep. Inside handoff for T. And about a yard, and we send it down to Alex Landon. Hey, Dave, well, I told you guys just before the half that John L. Smith has encouraged Clifton Ryan to step up, to be more of a leader throughout the season. Well, of course, Clifton Ryan ejected from this game, but he's still on the sidelines, and John L. is turning to him for some help on the sidelines. He just came over to him, said to him, hey, get everyone going. Go out there. Get everyone fired up. Go, go. He kind of pushed him, said, go get the guys fired up. Still looking for Clifton to be a vocal leader on the sidelines. And uh, Clifton told me yesterday, Dave, that John L. has said to him, I want you to be an extension of me he says uh, that is one kid who unlike so many who just want to blend in is not afraid of getting on some of his peers just a sophomore and they expect uh, a lot of leadership and a lot of tackles out of Clifton for the next two years but he was ejected in the first half for a fight on an extra point and uh, is in a position where that's really all he can do as Alex is reported do what John L. Smith asked of him and then try and keep his teammates' heads in the game. And a Hawaii player, Jeremy Inferaro, was also ejected. Now, uh, Sean Poole, the starting right offensive tackle for Michigan State's being taken off the field. He's walking under his own steam, but they are headed to the locker room. Jones sent Inferaro home. Kind of hard for John L. Smith to send Ryan home at this point. Stanton gets it off quickly against the Blitz. And it's Matt Trennan up the sideline. And it's 40, a first down at a gain of 13. As Sean Poole, this recently named first team all Big Ten, heads to the locker room. And now Stefan Wheeler is down. That's the, the other others. tackle. Wow. Michigan State has had the ejection. They've had a couple of limp offs. They just saw Sean Poole head to the locker room. He may be followed quickly by Stefan Wheeler. 72, middle of your screen. Yeah, his own guy rolled up his leg. That's Gordon Nabilski. Who came in for Sean Poole. Most That's talented offensive lineman they have. He is 330 on a 6'5 frame. He went 370 in high school in Passaic, New Jersey. So as Wheeler's 10 to 2, we have a break. 835 to go in the third quarter. And uh, hanging loose down there is John. Spiffy in his leg. And the right where he can catch all 50 miles an hour worth of gales on the floor of Aloha Stadium. Jeremy Scott took the pass at the line of scrimmage, headed upfield, got eight or nine yards before Abe Elamimian brings him down. Jeremy, the brother of Gary Scott, Michigan State's fourth all-time leading wide receiver from uh, the late 90s. And Drew Stan, that looks like an easy ball, just a quick throw outside, but watch, it's a front pocket catch. Gets the ball right out on the front number, and when you deliver the ball in that type of shape out to the perimeter, you give your offensive wideouts and running backs an opportunity to advance the football. Stanton with the thing and the keep and should have the first. He'll have it by about 
the length of the ball near midfield. Defensive strategy for Hawaii has changed. George Lumpkin, having been ripped right before the half, has come with a man coverage package, eight man front, getting somebody in every gap, run down blitzes is what it's called. And there's a price you pay. They're one on one outside, and that's why you get the throws on first down. And I would expect Michigan State to continue that. Uh, Michigan State runs the ball the way they've run the ball at times tonight. You got to take your chances. First and ten off the play fake. Stanton connecting with a game Shabai, and he'll be close for another first down, and he'll have the first down of the 40 of the Warriors. And Bill, the Spartans. Yeah, they're looking at what's going out on the field. They're checking out Hawaii's defensive front and eight men, nine men in the box. Play action is a pretty good call. It's a great call. I'm really impressed with the game Dave Baldwin is calling for John L. Smith and the uh, Spartans. So the basketball score just flowed by Michigan State losing big to George Washington in very uncommonizo fashion. 96-83. So the football team. Carrying the banner and carrying it well tonight. A flag down in the middle of the field. Another one thrown from the sideline as Stan keeps for nine yards. We might get a couple holds here. Hawaii yet to be penalized. Michigan State 11 for 79 yards. And last week Northwestern was penalized 13 times and Hawaii three. So that causes coaches to get suspicious. You see that quizzical look on John L's face how many times can you do this to us well, here is the breakdown five procedures three holding one illegal block that's just the offense defense has had two offsides two personal fouls special team had an unsportsmanlike of course on Lifton Ryan's ejection well, John L may have an argument on one of the holds, but not both of the holds on that call. Well, they'd be around 600 total yards if there weren't all the markoffs. Option pitch. Caught at the line of scrimmage. Jason Teague as Chad Kapanui stretches the play out and finishes it off. A career special teams specialist contributing as a senior on the outside linebacker spot. And Michigan State's had a lot of success with planned runs by the quarterback, option plays. Hawaii's done a nice job stringing out the option and not letting Stanton get loose Hawaii's, on the perimeter. Hawaii's just saying, you're not going to ram it down our throat running anymore. He's going to make them throw it. Four wide and DeAndre Cobb with the pitch. And the give on the reverse to Aaron Alexander. A wobbler. In the win, and it should have been intercepted by Leonard Peters. How did he drop that one? Mercy. Well, Aaron Alexander, number 10. Dave, the last time you and I did a game with Michigan State, he was the quarterback. So he can throw, although he didn't demonstrate his prowess on this one. This is a um, this is a duck, and it was just thrown up for whomever might want to try to catch it, and Peters wasn't prepared to do so. That did might not have look good on that ball, David. Hawaii might have needed a fair catch in the secondary on yeah. that play. Alexander's got to get that ball up about four seconds early, and not the greatest call in the world with 40 mile an hour wins. Leonard Peters has four interceptions. I wonder if any of them were as easy as that one should have been. Stanton incomplete, intended for Shabai. And thanks to another flurry of flags against Michigan State, Hawaii holes on fourth and 20, they'll kick. How many times have we seen favored teams come into Hawaii, play against this team, look like they have control of the football game, and then things start to turn? Hawaii just one score away from tying this football game. Four touchdown returns for Owens that's the best way to avoid a fifth occurring the nation's leading punter Brandon Fields showing that he can handle the directional duties as well, well last night here Kamehameha school took on 
Lelehua High School for Hawaii's Division I High School Football Championship. And after trailing 7 0 at halftime, the Warriors outscored the Mules 28 0 in the second half. The take home. Their first state title since 1974. Kamehameha 28, Lelehua 7. That Congratulations. Was a good looking back running down that sideline. Looked like he had speed. All that's at stake tonight. A bolded and Chang keeping for nine yards. Hawaii must win to avoid a six and six finish and get. The last remaining spot for the postseason. That would be against UAB here on Christmas Eve in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Well, last week, Timmy Chang took a hit near the sideline against Northwestern all the way to the bench area. He had a big cut on his arm. We were throwing the ball yesterday, and he said, yeah, that was courtesy of a Northwestern linebacker. Well, that was legal. That was a legal push there. Ronald Stanley did the right thing. He had to push him out of bounds. Second down and one. It's Kalikipi easily picking up the first down. Let's get an injury update. Uh, but Alex Flanagan, what do you know? Hey, Dave. Well, at least one of Michigan State's offensive tackles will not return. Trainers are telling me they think Stephon Wheeler has a sprained knee. He will not go back into the game. Meanwhile, right tackle Sean Poole is suffering from leg cramps. You guys saw him go into the locker room. They're telling me he's questionable. He may be able to return to this game, Dave. Both tackles out for Michigan State. And Hawaii with a first down at their 32. Over the middle, he's got Owens. Finally spots him. And Owens not pushed out. Poor tackling by the Spartans. Cost them at least 20 extra yards. How about Chad Owens? Number 29, Greg Cooper had him hemmed up on the sideline and came up with nothing. Well, Owens has done a great job of finding seams in the defense. I mean, this guy is a slot back deluxe. The quickness, reading the defense, and I'll tell you what, Timmy Chang is making some great plays moving in the pocket. Throwing that ball on the run, he placed that right on the numbers. 39 yards. Owens now at 233 receiving yards on nine catches. Kali'i Kipi with the very delicately tossed middle screen for five more yards. What a night for Owens. Yeah, they call him Mighty Mouse. And in the run and shoot, the slot back positions are so important. Last week, five touchdowns, four by air. He's had a field day tonight, getting in the seams. Here's a second touchdown catch. Look at the hands. Owens has really had a game tonight, Bill. Can you say Wayne Corvette? Boy, he looks a lot like Corvette. He's just like Corvette. I think he may be faster. He's 52 yards away from Ashley Lilly's single game warrior record. Chang on second down. Really great protection again. Now chased. Fires on the run at the 10-yard line. Caught. Hang it off for dear life. Britton Comine. Now, if you wonder how these things happen, you don't have to wonder very long. This comes from thousands and thousands of repetitions. When you watch Hawaii practice, this is what they do over and over and over. They adjust to the quarterback's location. They catch tough balls, and they do it forever. Roderick Maples, 17, gets the worst of this contact, slow getting up. Well, that's a beautiful play by Komine on the sideline, getting the left hand, or that left foot down. He's not the only one fired up in this stadium. Chang, another great job of throwing the ball on the move. I mean, we were told he doesn't throw it well on the move, Bill. Just inside the 10, first and goal. To the end zone. Touchdown, Owens. His third of the night. This is the finale. If they don't win and get the bowl bid, 
Chang and Owens are going out with some memories, aren't they? Same mismatch they've had most of the night. They caught him in man coverage again. 36, Eric Smith simply cannot run. He's a strong safety, cannot run with Chad Owens. From 21 back, Justin Ayat ties it with a flag. Is this the first penalty against Hawaii? It is. It's a big one, too. They're going to have to re-kick. Chad Owens, about 10 catches, 242 yards. Another kick and two, number 90, 15-yard penalty, replay for that one. You walk that thing back 15 yards, and all of a sudden in this wind, it becomes very problematic. Tony Ockpon, guilty of holding, but Got to look at this one again. The third touchdown catch of the night by Owens. Oh, what great footwork in the pocket by Chang. The ball comes out in a hurry. That is a beautiful ball. Owens working from the slot. The quickness of Owens as a slot back. I mean, he set up a move to the post, took it back love outside. You guys. I, love you I love you guys. It's a good thing he didn't drop that one. Feeling might have believe it. We believe. hammered him. More to come, he said. He's now got 14 touchdown catches on the year. Half of them have come against Big Ten competition in the last two weeks. This time the flag before the ball can even be snapped. Yep, Hawaii moved again. All start. Number 70. Five-yard penalty. He played a kick now. Folks, this could be the difference in the football game. Tala Acera. Now, Timmy Chang is in a zone right now. He is making some big time throws in this football game and I know he's thrown for over 16,000 yards but I'm sure if you talk to Tim after this football game he tell you this is about as good as he can throw it. This is now a 35 yard extra point facing Justin Ayat. And it's blocked. And Michigan State keeps the one point lead. In a game like this a Hawaii team that had not been guilty of a penalty while Michigan State had rolled up 12. Marches 15 yards on back to back penalties and they still trail 28 27. Great penetration inside. What a great job by Vickerson. He's been a thorn in the side of Hawaii all night long. Look at him just rip through that that gap between the right guard. That's the big gap between the right guard and the right tackle. He got a piece of it. See, it's rough in there in the pit, David. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it in there. I <laughs> tried to get back away from the center as quick as I could, Bill. I know that's an important special teams play there, but unless Michigan State gets a, another cornerback in the game to start lining up with Owens, at one point, it won't be much of a factor. I mean, he is threatening this defense in many different ways on his routes. Going, going out with the best game of his career. How many people can say that? And one, two. Don't forget Gomene with the great catch down here on the sideline. He's not the only guy. This is where they get you on the run with this offense. That's why they're never out of a football game. Owens now 43 yards away from the single game record. How they get that on their next possession, maybe on their next play. Sunday night, Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, Mark May, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet breaking down all the bowl games, including the BCS matchups on the College Game Day Bowl Selection Special presented by Outback Steakhouse, 6 Eastern, 1 Hawaii time. And again, uh, our BCS expert at ESPN, Brad Edwards, projecting that based on Cal's 26-16 struggle but victory at Southern Miss, he projects Texas will pass Cal, needing three voters in the AP poll to change their mind to jump the Golden Bears for the fourth spot, which guarantees a BCS bid. Brad Edwards rarely misses on anything involving the BCS. Teague for a loss, and that, along with the victories by USC and Oklahoma today, the headline in the BCS scramble that again our ESPN projection will have Texas and not Cal taking on Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Well Texas fans better hope that that projection isn't similar to the exit polls in elections. 
Oh, you liked that one. You enjoyed that, didn't you? I they, did enjoy that. They were only 13 thousandths of a point behind Cal to begin with. So they didn't have to make up much. And our projection is that in winning by just 10, Cal will lose that slim margin. Stanton on the keeper. Back to the original line. It'll be third and 10. Well, Southern Miss is a top 25 team the whole year. I mean, how can that not be an impressive victory for Cal to go in and win by more than a touchdown? I don't understand that. Well, I mean, there was a block PAT return for two that uh, turned that game. And we got, a, we got really, a player down. Southern Miss probably really hung longer than that 10-point margin finally indicates. And uh, Daryl Tautufi, defensive lineman, is the injured warrior. Well, Bill, a year ago, we were talking about Oklahoma's Upset defeat in the Big 12 championship game by Kansas State throwing everything awry. That, that in fact, knocked Texas out of another BCS bid. They would have gone to the Fiesta. Kansas State took that. And we we're also talking about the fact that the system was going to prevent the number one team in both polls last year as this year, USC, from playing for the national championship. At least that won't be the case this year. No, but uh, an Auburn team that has done the unbelievable go all the way through the SEC and win convincingly in the SEC championship game is it looks as if going to be deprived of the chance to play in the in the national championship game and I would have thought that to be impossible. In fact, Tuberville has, has thought it was impossible. Well, they talk about the BCS system being a sound system and matching up number one, number two, and I can't see how anybody could argue that Auburn doesn't deserve to, to have a shot at the national title. I'd be devastated if I was one of that those Auburn team members or coaches or fans. I, I don't think it's fair. Well, I, the thing really is, there, that was guaranteed to happen. There was guaranteed going to be somebody left out as long as there were all the unbeatens and, and Boise State also unbeaten but left out so there was no way around it even in the old system in mean, any system except for a playoff which is nowhere near happening than it's ever been apparently someone was going to be left out of the party and in this case happens to be Auburn it's happened Penn State more often than they can remember. Well, so, I've, well, I've been around football a long time, and I've been in every kind of system, and somebody is always left out. Yeah, I played on yeah. a Baltimore Colt team that went through the NFL season and lost one game all year and did not make the playoffs. So it happens. Well, Bill, it doesn't happen anymore in the NFL. Third down and 10, Stanton. Avoids pressure, keeps needs the 30 and he got it with a foot to spare what did his coach say he said he runs like a drunken sailor he looks like a drunken sailor when he runs but then then he said this word he said he is great he has great running ability and we just saw it there he makes the running game go he also makes the passing game go just with his grip that's presence and awareness George Lumpkin up there. What do you do to stop this guy? Stoned him for three straight, two straight plays, and he runs by everybody. In the first half, Michigan State had 403 total yards, only 84 allowed by Lumpkin's group here in the second half. So they made some adjustments that have worked. Teague works his way through a tackle, picks up five hard-earned yards. Let's go down to Alex. Hey, you guys. Well, George Lumpkin told us yesterday how worried he was about Drew Stan. He said that his running ability can demoralize a defense. He said, you think you've got him, you think you have him covered, and then he takes off, runs for 15 yards. Lumpkin calls him a running back who doesn't ever fear getting hurt. He says he's the best they've seen. And plays like that would be a big reason. Past the original line of scrimmage. And now second down and the six. And this time it's DeAndre Cobb who has the first at the 42. Really poor tackling that time. Again, the defensive call was exactly what the doctor ordered. You got no play. You shouldn't be able to just turn and hand off, with, especially without a lead back when every gap is occupied. But just DeAndre Cobb ran right through tacklers. And if he can do that, then Michigan State will reassume control of this football game. Over 100, now at 117 yards on 14 carries, Cobb. Stanton, eight carries, 51 yards. He's thrown for 272. Almost losing his footing is Cobb. Uh, 
It's a nice cut off the outside foot and now is in great pain reaching and grabbing his left shoulder at midfield. Andre Cobb having a whale of a night. Now 124 yards after picking up seven to the 50. And the Michigan State training staff has had a night they'd love to forget. Man, I'll say, I said in the first half, the way the game was going was a nightmare for the Hawaii staff. But here in the second half, the trainer's trips out onto the field is a nightmare for the coaching staff and the team. Yeah, he landed on that left shoulder with a bunch of weight on top of about 600 pounds coming down. You land directly on the shoulder and it separates or is bruised or something. Spartans have lost both starting tackles. Stephon Wheeler, Sean Poole, and now at least for the moment they've lost DeAndre Cobb. Second and three, Stanton looking deep for Jeremy Scott in and out of his hands at the 10. That ball has got to be doing something really funny down in that end zone. Maybe the swirl. You can see all the paper blowing around, but they're having trouble hemming the ball up. It's like watching some of the left fielders we saw in the World Series this year. Well, the problem is this ball is late. Stan's going to fake the option play. you got to get the ball up two counts before he does on this. I mean, these receivers on the perimeter are fast, and they're going to get down the field on you. You're throwing the ball in this wind. As a quarterback, you've got to get the ball up early. Poole is back in at right tackle. Third and three. Well, they got a room with a marker down. The throw is caught by Terry Love at the 35. But we'll wait for the indication, which should be holding. It is. They've already indicated it. This is going to negate a super play by Drew Stanton. I mean, Stanton was ready to go out of bounds, threw the ball back across his body. Yeah, and he got something on it. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Holding on the offense. Well, if you're counting, that is 13 penalties on Michigan State. Two against Hawaii. Bear in mind, this is a Michigan State team that was very, very good in the penalty area during the season. Less than four a game. Now we're going to have some Michigan State coaches and backers look at those numbers and scratch their head. Maybe more than scratch their head. Maybe bang it against the wall. So instead of first and 10 at the 35 of Hawaii, how about a third and 13 at their own 40? Rolling left, turning back, looking right. Right where he was for the catch, it's Jeremy Scott again at the 35, and this time there are no flags. First down, Spartans, 25 yards. Well, this time Stanton got set and drove the ball through the wind. But this is a long throw, David. It is a long throw, and look at the footwork. They sell the roll out to the left. We take a look at the receiver ISO. Jeremy Scott driving up the field. We talked about Owens' work at slot back, but Scott working out of the slot has had a big night. That for Stanton gets him just a shade under 300 passing yards. 18 to 25 for 296. He has rushed for 51. A little swing pass for Shabai. And the Warriors have that gobbled up. When you go man to man and you got all those people in the box, Elamimian and all the other corners are by themselves. That was a very alert and a quick break and a nice tackle in the open field. And Bill, and off offensively, I think when you see that man to man coverage on the outside, you try to penalize a defense with a ball that's vertical down the football field. A 21 point Spartan lead is a one point lead thanks only to a block extra point as we go to the court. I consider myself smart. In the know. Practical. Practical. So when I wanted a new SUV, I did my homework. I found the perfect one. Suzuki. Well, with 55 oh. points and 914 yards of total offense under our belts, welcome to the fourth quarter. With Bill Curry, 
David Nori, Alex Flanagan, Dave Barnett, and Aloha Stadium in Honolulu on a second down and 11. We begin the fourth with a toss over the middle off the hand of Teague and incomplete. And it'll be third and 11 for Drew Stanton and the Michigan State offense responsible for 530 of those 914 combined total yards. Drew Sean Stanton, Poole. Sean Poole's back on the field, number 79. So he's gotten through his cramps, and that's real good news for the offense for Michigan State. Drew Stanton was begging for a holding call from the officials after that last play. Didn't get one. Well, then he'll probably get one if he wants it badly enough. Was he nice and polite when he asked? Yeah, he asked for it about seven or eight times. Cop on the sprint draw. It's about half what he needed. And now at the 32, we may see a fourth down try. No, nope, we're going to see Rayner for the field goal. Our Yamaha game track. Chad Owens, 242 yards, career high. And within 43 yards of a single game, Hawaii receiving record. Seven touchdown catches over the last two weeks against Big Ten defenses. The blocked extra point by Kevin Vickerson is the margin right now for Michigan State. And the all-time Spartan scoring leader, Dave Rayner, excellent candidate for the Girls Award, about to try a 49-yarder. His best is 53. He has plenty of leg on this one and is good. Wow. That thing's good from 60. He boomed it. Hawaii did not try to pressure, and I... I suppose they just assumed that there would be some sort of fake, certainly the risk of a fake, so they played for the fake. The strong leg of senior Rayner makes it a four-point. Ten scoring leader Dave Rayner may be the most powerful leg in college football. Just proved it again with a 49-yarder to make it 31-27 Michigan State, and then blocked PAT, a 35-yard effort after two penalties against Hawaii. Looming ever larger. Warriors now must have a touchdown, not just a field goal. 55 seconds gone in the fourth quarter. And now the powerful leg puts it four yards beyond the end line. Down to Alex Flanagan. Well, Dave, John L. Smith was very clear that this was a business trip, but he did arrange one visit for his team to go see a very important memorial. Yesterday, Michigan State players visited the USS Arizona Memorial, and they even got to meet two Pearl Harbor survivors. Now, he thought that a trip, John L. said, he thought that a trip to Hawaii would be incomplete without a history lesson at Pearl Harbor. The players were very excited about the visit. Matt Trannon told me yesterday that one thing that he learned is that he had no idea that oil still le leaked from the wreckage. He said that it was very educational and very emotional to meet and talk to the two veterans, Dave. And everyone uh, I've ever talked to who made that trip and that tour says exactly the same thing. It's impossible not to be moved by the Arizona Memorial. Gerald Welch spinning for a couple extra yards after the catch. And uh, not quite enough for the first. It'll be second and one. Well, Dave, I've made a visit to the Memorial, and when you arrive at the Memorial, you're instructed to almost be completely silent and and I think it even adds to to the emotion that Alex Flanagan was talking about one of the you know truly you know, huge events in our nation's history and, and really one of the, the neatest visits in Hawaii that I've ever been a part of. A lot more than the first down by Brewster the former walk-on at Tennessee finally captured by David Heron Jr after 16 yards on a second and one. Brewster, outgoing senior. Chang, likewise. Owens, likewise. Also receivers Komine, Welch. A lot of talent has to be replaced. Nice job by sophomore Hercules Sotelli pulling from his left guard spot and leading up inside and clearing the way. For 26 Hawaii seniors, they are either ending their career tonight if they lose, or they'll end it on Christmas Eve against UAB. Back to work, Chad Owens. Ever closer to the single game Hawaii record to the 40. 14 more yards. All night long, Owens has been threatening this defense vertically. Seam routes down the middle, a couple touchdowns. 
post corner route for a touchdown. And as a defense, you find yourself backing off. Then he tucks it down, sits down, and creates some easy throws for Tim Chang. Owens also has the record for single game catches. That's 14. He's close to that. 257 on his 11 catches tonight. Chang looks for him again. Caught and dropped. A hair away from first and goal as he had Greg Cooper beaten. That's two drops. Very un-Chad Owens-like. Well, I talked to Mouse Davis yesterday, the consultant, former coach for June Jones of Portland State, and he did say that Owens had a couple drops this year in football games. From time to time, Owens will make the unexpected drop. Maybe. That's not really a drop. Now Maybe that, you give Cooper credit. There. Greg Cooper did a good job. He got his hand over and got a piece of that ball. I think um, I think Chad would have pulled it in had Cooper not batted it out. Another great throw by Chang. Chang at 370 yards now. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. Welch keeps his balance, and he should have first down yardage at the 30. He was a yard short, refused to go down. 5'7". 216 pounds, Gerald Welch. Yeah, when you look at him in practice, you think he, now he ought to be either a kicker, a holder, or a little fullback. And he's out there playing wide receiver. Watch this, 215 pounds of solid muscle and balance. I saw that 5'7 on the yep. roster. I thought, that's got to be a typo. Surely he's 6'7. Nope. No, no, he's 5'7. Actually, he's probably about 5'5. Five, five. He's a heck of an athlete. He's got him just inside the 30, down by four, under 12 minutes to go. Kiki, 280 pounds worth, and he powers his way for eight or nine into the arms of David Heron, Jr. I told you Kiki Kiki was a load running up in there behind Derek Fahavi, Brendan Eaton, Uriah Monoa, big guys for Hawaii. Doing better in the running game this half. Yeah, and with Chad Owens threatening from that slot back position, linebackers starting to take notice. And then all of a sudden, Hawaii springs a draw play on you. It creates a nice running run. Rooster back in the backfield. Three wides on the left side. Chang with the play clock. Right at zero. Gets the hand off to Brewster. Flag down. Brewster. Touchdown. Has its first lead. I don't think this is going to stand. Holding. Just their third penalty of the night. The other two were costly. They cost Hawaii one point. This holding mark on cost of six. Bill Kaufman. Michigan State has had 10 more penalties than Hawaii. They've overcome theirs. This is now seven points off the board because of three markoffs on the Warriors. And the flag thrown right behind Kaufman. Instead of a touchdown and a lead. Second and 11 from the 31. One of those outs that either bounce or sail on Chang intended for Owens. Third and 11. What is it, David, about that throw that's so difficult for him? Well, I'll tell you what. It's hard to predict which way the, the wind is blowing from up in the press box. And Timmy Chang and... Drew Stanton are fighting some swirling conditions down on the field. There are going to be some angles on some throws that are going to be tougher than other angles. And a couple times he's thrown it wide out to the left here and hasn't had the same results he's had down the field on some other tougher throws. Slow start. He's erased the memory of it. 26 of 44. 380. Steps away from the sack and will keep. Flag thrown way across the field in front of the near sideline. 
and thrown very late. Thrown by the line judge. He could not have been farther away from that play. But he's sure he saw something. Sideline warning. Inconsequential. Just a warning. The move that Timmy Chang puts on Kevin Vickerson in the backfield here. This is pure Harry Houdini. I mean, Vickerson is their best pass rusher, and then he turns it on up the sidelines. Look at the hit. The hits are getting nasty, Bill. Yeah, that was legal, though. I would like this. Drew Stanton, Timmy Chang shows the legs. First and goal of the nine, Brewster. Number two. Off from behind by Heron. Heck of a play by Heron. Heron coming off the backside, number 41, the weak side linebacker. Left his feet and dove. Otherwise, that goes in the end zone. Hard fought physical football game going on right here on this beautiful island. Most coaches that come over here say, This is our bowl game. This is how we're going to approach it. John L. Smith said just the opposite, but there won't be many more entertaining or offensive minded bowl games than this one. We're around a thousand combined yards. 534 for Michigan State, 468 for Hawaii, total yardage. It looked like to me that Hawaii wasn't lined up right. They didn't have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Yep, that's what it was. It's un unbelievable that you can get into the red zone and have veteran wide receivers and they didn't line up properly. Had trips to the wide side of the field and all three of them are off the ball and one of them's got to be up. We talked about some of the play calling for Michigan State tonight, but how about June Jones really working a nice mix of draw plays and passing offense. I mean, he's fighting for a bull, a bull spot here. This Hawaii team, they come out with a victory. They're going to play another game here on the island. Second and goal. Warriors at the 11. Chang looking middle. Guns it into traffic for Owens. And there to make the play on it, Eric Smith. Third and goal. He was just a shade late with that throw. Both safeties got there that time. The very safeties that have struggled so, Harmon and Smith converged and were able to bat the ball. I couldn't tell which one of them got a hand on it. We're watching Tim Chang on film this season. I didn't have an idea on film of the arm strength. He really tries to fit the ball into some tight spaces, and a lot of times he's gotten away with it tonight, Bill. But he's just got that wonderful knack. Lock P18 living so big again here. Must get a touchdown. And he might get it right here. Jason Rivers stretches. Does he get the pylon? Owens over there to be helpful and make the touchdown signal himself, but no official has joined him as of yet. That was a third and goal at the 11. And they will say Rivers is inches shy. Reading Ashton Jones. Watson. June Jones is going to go here. Watch Chang in the time, and he throws this ball well before Rivers comes out of his break. Good call by the official. He's on the ground. The football's on the ground, inches short of the goal line. That, that's a tough call and a good call. Timeout called by Michigan State. When we come back, we'll have fourth and goal, inches away from their first lead of the night. June Jones, Hawaii Warriors. Playing for a bowl bid. It's Green Apple Gone Silver. Introducing Bacardi Silver. ESPN2's College Football Saturday Primetime. After the Michigan State timeout, as you would expect, the 280 pounder, West Kelly Keepy checks into the backfield on what will be fourth and goal from maybe a foot away probably not quite a foot away and Hawaii has called time ESPN 2's college football Saturday primetime brought to you by Wendy's Wild Mountain Chicken and Bacon Cheeseburger it's better here View from Diamond Head, looking over Waikiki and 
downtown Honolulu. Well, June Jones had a look at Michigan State's defensive alignment. Called timeout of his own. Got to think the only logical thing to do, not that that means they'll do it, is hand it to Kevin E. Keep it. Yeah, I like you, the way you insinuated, uh, by the way you phrased your sentence there, with June Jones calling the plays, it's almost never what you think it's going to be, which is one of the reasons for his genius in this offensive thinking. Well, and, and but I would sure hand it to him, or I'd run a sneak with Chang. David, we talked about the history of the run and shoot, and historically, the strike against it has been the inability yeah, to run it over in situations like this, but not many have had a 280 pounder to hand it to. Some of the linemen came out and tried to rev up the crowd at work, and then the back started saying, and the Timmy started saying, calm down, be quiet. Fourth and goal, Chang, second effort on the quarterback sneak, touchdown. Hawaii has its first lead. Four pounds less than Kali Keefe. Timmy Chang nevertheless gets the job done. Yeah, that was shaky because the center, Derek Faave, got knocked right back in his lap. He really struggled to control the football. Michigan State nose guard, and I don't know who they had lined up in the nose, smoked the center big time. That ball almost went on the ground. Yeah, that play looked very ugly early. Chang did not look like he was going to score. Made a great move to his right. Second effort broke the plane. Ayat has had five missed PATs. That's a big one. That forces Michigan State to tie with a field goal, not lead with the field goal. One more look. Timmy Chang almost fumbles the snap before he recovers, dives, and scores. And for the first time tonight, Michigan State trails. A foot out has made it 34 31 Hawaii a warrior team that trailed 21 to nothing in the second quarter has come all the way back and now must rely on one of the lowest rated defenses in the country for the last nine minutes and 22 seconds what's he doing throwing the football because of this cold weather it's down to 78 you know well that's without the wind chill as Chang was scoring, what was June Jones doing? Well, it's almost as if he couldn't bear to look. I, didn't, I don't think he wanted to watch. The play is going on. Chang is scoring, and Jones is either so confident he doesn't have to look, or he can't bear to look. No, some coaches are superstitious. My wife, Carolyn's superstitious. She would never watch a long snap, either for me or our son. I guess it's because maybe I didn't do too well. Well, the trouble that Chang had with that snap and how close Hawaii came to not scoring on that play. I mean, that was as ugly a quarterback sneak as you'll ever want to see. I'm not sure June Jones wants to see that on film. This kick is going to have to happen again. Offsides Hawaii. So they may have a chance to return this one, get better field position as Chang keeps the arm loose near 400 passing yards. I mean, Bill, you were right. The center just got blown up right yeah. back into Chang. Chang almost fumbled the snap and still picked his way to the goal line. I don't understand why more teams don't do that to the center because you're, you cannot get down. You cannot bend your arms and get down in a really low stance because you have to stay in the same position in order to hike the ball. When you pull that ball up and that guy hits you right in the chin at the top of his head, you're, you're helpless. The way he's talking... I think so the staff over there is he maybe shaken up. I think he got dinged a bit. Sure enough, the penalty means Cobb has a shot at a return. Maybe a big one. Cobb may take it all the way. Another killer penalty against Hawaii. And another quick response by Michigan State. Mouse Davis is the special teams coach. Nobody knows more about football than Mouse, but the basics have come unglued here. Uh-oh. This offsides Michigan State. Unbelievable. Well, 
on the block. Illegal block, Michigan State. But it's coming back. John L. Smith beside himself. 14th penalty against the Spartans. Wiping out a 98-yard kickoff return. The cop takes it right up the gut. A couple missed tackles. I mean, he's been sensational. And the flag came all the way over on the opposite side of the field. The flag came late. And Cobb looked like he pulled up late on that run. Well, I saw the block over on the other side of the field. I couldn't tell who it was, but a Michigan State player had a Hawaii player and had knocked him down and uh, got him on the ground. And apparently, that was the illegal block. It was 40 yards away from the play. Well, and that's what so often happens. And it's why you teach your guys, if you're out of the play, do not block behind the runner. Well, they're going to be talking about the officials in East Lansing for years to come. Yeah, they wouldn't football. even have gotten a chance if the officials had to call Hawaii offside. It's a 49-yard, six-point penalty in effect. Spartans start with the short toss. Terry Love juggled it and uh, did not bring it in. Second you gotta, attempt. You, excuse me, David, but you got to remember that Hawaii's had a touchdown call back because of a penalty. No, I understand. Hawaii was required to kick over again that gave them a chance to return that ball. So at worst, they got midfield field position, whereas they would have started on the 20 otherwise. Bill, I'm talking about the disparity in number of penalties between the two. Right. Not that specific call. Teague kicks his way seven yards. And third and Three coming from Michigan State. I mean, you're, you're going to get some believe that penalties, and... penalties even out over the long haul. Now, meantime, it never does any good to complain about them. I'm not saying I never did that. Meantime, return to the scene. And Timmy Chang has apparently giving the Hawaii training staff cause for concern. They've been with him every second since his touchdown. Not keep it loose just to keep the arm loose. Making sure all the parts still work. Third and three, Stanton. Keep here all the way, and he fools nobody. A loss of two. Ho'ohuli and Moy, the linebackers, are there to yeah. drop Drew Stanton at the 44. Let's look again at the kickoff. And the 90-yard return wiped out. Where was the penalty? Well, I, I'm going to show you. If it, let's go ahead and roll it, and we'll see. Okay, right here is where there's a white shirt on the back of a black shirt, and the black shirt's going on the ground. It's fully 30, 40 yards away from the action. I would say that's a bit sketchy right there. Late. Getting onto the field, Michigan State. We saw Dortch. And a fake punt. Blown up in their face for the Spartans. Nowhere to go for Dave Rayner, who was trying to fake from midfield. Looked upfield, rolled, and had nowhere to go. Now this game is turning into a nightmare for John L. Smith. Daryl Totofi and Mel Purcell, number 95 and number 98, tracked him down. This is not a very well-conceived play. It's just well covered. Nice job. Nice job by the Hawaii safe punt unit. When you're the head coach and you call one of those, and if it doesn't work, you have to take the responsibility. So the Warriors take over at their own 49-yard line with a three-point lead and 7-16 to play. Ali'i Kipi inside the 45 at the 43, a gain of eight. There are provisions, as Terrell Dorch is injured, there are provisions for flags to be picked up when passes are uncatchable. Shouldn't there be a provision where an illegal block happens so far away from the kick return, it has absolutely nothing to do with the return itself, but well, that flag should be picked well, up. That no, 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 here's the reason you can't do that. It wasn't conclusive anyway. Was, I, saw it, I saw it in, in, real, in real action. He was on his back and drove him in the ground. 
The reason you can't do that is because guys would just take cheap shots if you didn't penalize them because they happen to be on the other side of the field. Well, personal foul is one thing. Cheap shot ought to be fouled. Owens, first down. Chad Owens, maybe on a record-setting night in his final regular season game for the University of Hawaii. Just bedeviling Greg Cooper finally fights him down after a 10-yard pickup and another first. Chad Owens is about as good a route runner as I've seen this year in college football. I mean, you get a kid with a two-way go setting up in the slot position. What a just a luxury for a quarterback, quarterback like Timmy Chang, who can deliver the ball on the money and on time. 5'9", 175. When he was in high school, he did 25 bench presses with 225. Now that's pretty good for a big lineman in college. So he's a powerful little guy. That's 12 catches, 267 yards. 18 for the record. Now Lee Keepy, only a few times, unable to get his head of steam going before he's run down from behind by David Heron Jr. Well, Kalei Keepy tried to get fancy. He tried to dance in the hole a little bit. Big man, just explode. You had a little crease. I didn't see much of a crease there. We'll make one. <laughs> Run over something. Don't give him a leg and take it away. I'll tell you, with that body, not easy to run through small creases, that's for sure. Yeah, but it's better. He, he makes them. He makes creases. Call it a loss of two. Hawaii averages 95 yards per game, only 109th in the country. They're right at 95. Yep. It was the ground game that gave them the go-ahead score. Now with more to the crease. A lot more. Kali Kipi to the 15. The Kali Kipi Bill serve a notice that he can run on the outside as well. How about that burst of speed from yes, the 280 sir, and a pounder? Great job by number 67, Phil Kaufman who pulls from his left guard spot. Nice job. He logs or hooks in the outside man. In this case, 59, Clifford Dukes got logged inside, and Kalia Kipi bounced it outside and turned it on. Turned it on for 20. And it's first and 10. Spartan, 15, 447 and counting. Hawaii only gets only lead of the game with a great chance now to add to it. Michigan State swarming before the Lee Keepy can get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Michigan State had control of this football game, a 14-point lead. And now John L. Smith's team's faced with a situation where they don't come up with a stop here. It's going to be tough to win this football game. Hawaii 6 and 5. Must win for them to get to the postseason. If they don't. Hang on tonight. This is it. The 26 seniors, including the all-time NCAA career passing leader Timmy Chang. Under four minutes. Chang to the end zone and overthrows Owens incomplete. It'll be third and eleven. That's a smart play by Chang. Got a three-point lead in your back pocket. If you're going to make a throw in the end zone, make sure you see the danger. And if it isn't there, throw the football away. Third and 11. Three helps. Three means Michigan State's got to get seven. They can't with 349 to go. One of the lowest ranked defenses in the country. Assume that they could hold Michigan State without a touchdown once they get it back six out of 12 on third downs once behind 21 to nothing Owens another touchdown the fourth of the night from Chang the fourth catch for a touchdown tonight for Owens. And you can chalk that one up to great protection by the big guys up front. A double stunt by Michigan State, and nobody gets close. Nice pocket 
Chang's able to survey the field, step up and make his throw. Yeah, Owen sets it up with a move to the middle of the field, gets his eyes back to the passer, and once again, Chang, great job of sliding to his left in the pocket and delivering the football. Ayat makes it 41-31. That gets Chad Owens two yards away from the Hawaii single game record. Not that he's thinking about that right now. Hawaii by 10. Oh, oh my back. Need some help? Yeah. Try my Bayer back and body. Thanks, hon. It's Bayer Aspirin plus a special pain relief booster. It works right where it hurts. Holiday, discover the magic at Radio Shack. And pay no interest for 18 months on a $299 minimum purchase amount financed when you shop with your Radio Shack Answers Plus credit card. Enjoy no interest for 18 months on a new digital camera, digital camcorder, LCD TV, electronic air purifier, even the new Apple iPod from HP. Pay no interest for 18 months when you use your Answers Plus credit card. It's a special holiday deal right in your neighborhood. Only at Radio Shack. Such a typical performance by a Hawaii team that was just about blown off the field in the first quarter and a half. Down 21 to nothing before they could get Chang to Owens cranked up. Once that happened, there has been no stopping the Warriors. 27 to 3 is the second half score. And taking a gamble to bring this one out. Cobb breaking helmet to helmet across the 40-yard line. Robbed of that 98-yard touchdown last time, obviously still brimming with confidence. Let's go down to Alex. Well, Dave, I am joined by the executive director of the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, Jim Donovan. And Jim is anxiously awaiting to present Hawaii an invitation to your bowl on Christmas Eve. Why is it so important to you to have Hawaii in this bowl? Well, Alex, look at these over 45,000 people just going nuts watching this exciting game. Basically, in 2001, UH was 9-3, and three, didn't have anywhere to go, no bowl game to play in. Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, we offered them. If they're bowl eligible, they're in it, and we're very excited. How do you sell the game? UAB Hawaii, what's the best selling point? Well, UAB's got a great quarterback, and this is their first bowl game ever. And, of course, you can look at these fans. They come out to see us play anybody, so it'll be a great game. All right, Jim, we hope to see you afterwards presenting that invitation. Thank you, Alex. Michigan State needing two scores, and they start with a six-yard Matt Trannon catch, held at three points and 137 yards this second half after they broke out 21 to nothing. Chang now at 416 through the air, all four of his touchdown passes to Owens with a career-high 283 yards on his 13 catches. Jason Teague diving across midfield. And out of bounds, 48-yard line of the Warriors with a first down. I hate to rain on the Sheraton Hawaii Bulls, you know, best intentions, but there's plenty of time in this football <laughs> game. Two, two I minutes, 57 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, much stranger things have happened, and I wouldn't put Michigan State in the can quite yet. But just look at DeAndre Cobb's statement, bringing it three yards out of the end zone and starting at the 40-yard line. Stanton now over 300 passing, 21 out of 30, 306. Well, it just wouldn't be right. We didn't have a few more flags to finish off our evening. And I'm sure Michigan State's going to be upset with the officiating, but there's the call. On Sean Poole. You can see it on Sean Poole. But most of these calls have been obvious. They've been movement on the part of the offensive line of Michigan State. And then there have been some really... Yeah, that's the seventh procedure call. Thank you. On, against the offensive line moving early. 15 penalties, 114 yards. Even despite that, they have 545 total. Will it be enough? Deep middle and caught. Scott inside the 30, and the Spartans on the move with still 250 to play. 24 yard strike from Stanton. Clock stops, two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Michigan State still has two timeouts. They can score here with more than two minutes to go on the clock if they work quickly. Plenty of time. Plenty of time for Michigan State. Four man rush. Nobody near Stanton looks up. Plenty of room over the middle, and he keeps for about four yards. That's what Hawaii's going to have to do. They're playing a basic two deep, five under zone. Everybody was covered. They didn't have anybody down the scene that time, and I don't know why they wouldn't, David. That 
it's tough that you have to burn a timeout in that situation. One thing Stanton does not want to do is tuck it and, and not get to the chains because then the clock continues to roll. Plenty of time for the Spartans with one timeout now and needing two scores. Between form and function just became razor thin. The Motorola Razor, only from the new Singular. The new Singular, raising the bar. This is it. Where is it? Introducing the full size 5.6 liter V8 Nissan Armada. Where are we? Share the adventure. Stanton keeping after the quick timeout and run out of bounds. Right at the 17. That moves the chains. That stops the clock at 229. 41-31 Hawaii. Michigan State in the second half has managed only a 49-yard Dave Rainer field goal. Now, Drew Stanton in this situation wants to make sure that he throws the ball beyond the chains. He has to save that last time out to stop the clock if they kick deep to Hawaii. A little bit low on the delivery of the 12 intended for Jeremy Scott. Well, Stanton may be a little bit lucky that he didn't complete that football. They need as many ticks on the clock as they can save here because of the fact they only have one timeout left. Wouldn't you be throwing it in the end zone here? Absolutely. David, this close, and, and especially if you can get them in man coverage. Well, you don't necessarily have to throw it in the end zone, but you have to throw it down inside the seven yard line. That's where Michigan State can gain the first down because you either get an incomplete pass, which stops the clock, a completion stops the clock as well. You can't take a sack. Don't come down to receivers in front of the chain. Worth noting, all the yardage, all the penalties, nobody has turned it over yet. Stanton keeping first and goal at the two. Man defense, all out blitz, nobody to cover the quarterback. And that is a gutsy call because if Stanton doesn't get to the chains on that, they chew up another nice piece of the clock. John L. Smith relies on his quarterback to make a big play, and once again, Stanton comes through. Teague in the backfield. Gets it on first and goal. Hammered at the one. Keeps the legs driving. Gets inside the one. And if Hawaii is smart, they will take as long as humanly possible to unpile this that, under two minutes. Don't like the call, Bill. That was a huge play. That was a huge play just because of the second that tick off the clock. Yeah, that I don't like that call. You can't afford to run that, run the ball in that play. You don't make the end zone, you lose 25 seconds at least. Second and goal. Option pitch. Team leaping over the corner. Touchdown. And with a minute 31. And a timeout still in the back pocket of John L. Smith. The third touchdown tonight for Jason T. Uh, once again, Stanton coming out on the option. And finally, Bill, crisp execution on the option play by Stanton. Even then, he didn't take it all the way to the inside shoulder of the end man, but he got far enough. And I think he felt his running back had some room outside and wanted to shovel the ball out to him quickly. But with 131 on the clock, and assuming the extra point here, Michigan State's probably going to have to go on side. They are. 75, 76 straight extra points for Dave Rayner. Within a field goal, and Timmy Chang, with all his thoughts now, centered on running out. The last minute, 31 on the clock. You know, Bill, if Michigan State has two timeouts here, they might want to kick deep, but with only one timeout, even if they stop Hawaii, 
Hawaii runs the ball three times. There'd be less than 30 seconds left in this football game before Michigan State would get the ball back. You actually think under any circumstances they wouldn't onside kick here? Well, if you had two or three timeouts, you certainly with three timeouts, you kick deep here if you trust well, your defense. With one timeout remaining, the offense can run roughly a minute and 10 seconds off the clock. That's right, inside that's, 30 seconds. That's the research done by our dear friend Homer Smith, who's spent so many years learning and teaching this very kind of thing. One timeout, the offense using optimal timing on the clock and running it down as far as possible with each play is able to run off a minute and 10 seconds. But with two timeouts, and the point I was trying to make with two timeouts, they can take the clock down inside a minute if they run three times and don't get a first down. And remember, Hawaii only needs a field goal to take this into overtime. And 50 seconds is plenty of time from any spot on the field with the clock stopping they, on first downs in college football to move it down into field goal position. But they don't have two timeouts. That's right. Dave Rayner, a great kicker with a powerful leg, but right now needs finesse and touch with the hands team out there from Michigan State. He was superb in practice at this very kind of kick. Looks for the high hop. And it is loose and covered by Hawaii with a flag down, however. Recovered at the 42. But a marker down at the 37. And uh, getting up off the pile, ball in hand. C.J. Allen Jones. That's a linebacker with good hands because that was not an easy ball to come up with. Encroachment on the kicking team. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Well, even if Michigan State recovers it, flag is on them. Yeah, the timeout that Michigan State used on that last drive, very costly. Michigan State got the bounce they wanted, just couldn't come up with the football. Hawaii needs to make a first down here. They're not going to be able to kneel on the ball. They don't want to give Michigan State the football at the 40-yard line with about with 20 seconds left on the clock. Well, they put themselves in position to play for a bowl bid tonight by beating Northwestern 49-41. Kali'i keeping on the carry on first down and at 125 remaining Michigan State must spend that final timeout. We saw this exact situation in the USC UCLA game earlier today. USC not quite with the ability to, to bleed the clock down to zero so they had to continue to run the football and UCLA came up with a fumble. We wondered when we came on tonight if the career of Timmy Chang would ride off into the sunset. And if they had lost tonight, it would in fact be his finale. College football's all-time leading passer would see his career end short of a bowl bid. When it was 21-0 Michigan State, that looked like a real possibility. But Chang and Chad Owens in their final regular season appearance at Aloha Stadium have combined to make sure that Barring a disaster or a Spartan miracle, that will not be the case. And they're a minute 25 away from, again, playing in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl that was created just for them, just to uh, avoid any more nine-win seasons with no bowl in the picture for Warrior football. Hard to believe that Timmy Chang and Chad Owens could follow up their game against Northwestern last week with bigger numbers. I mean, they had monster numbers last week against Northwestern. And I think they've outdone themselves again. I want to tell you something about June Jones. He'll throw the ball in this situation. Because a lot of these little throws are June Jones' version of the running game. Now, I'm not saying he will do it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not guaranteeing he's going to do it, but he has done it. We've seen him do it. We were here last year, Dave. Yep. It's a very similar situation. Yep. He'll throw the football. If he throws if it. If you throw it here, I think it's the only way you can lose a football game. I think you're inviting disaster. You cannot throw the football in this situation. With no timeouts left for Michigan State. And off again, Kalee Kifi to the 34. Well, if Jones decides to have Chang throw it to Owens, he's one catch away from tying his own single game record of 14. He's two yards away from tying Ashley Lilly's single game record of 285 yards. But the clock down 
at one minute now and on third and seven you would think you almost have to throw now or do you we'll find out they can no, snap the ball at no. 37 seconds no they're they're going to snap the ball here and then they're going to go ahead and let the clock tick some more no way in the world would you passing ever consider set. throwing the ball? Passing set, David. No way. Hand off. You're right. Lee keeping four yards shy of the first, and the clock at 32 seconds. We'll see when they start the game clock. The play clock at 25 with 27 seconds on the game clock. But the Warriors already swarming onto the field to celebrate. The officials are very generous with the time allocation before they wound the clock. But that's the way they've run it all night. Hawaii will see Timmy Chang and Chad Owens work their magic one more time on Christmas Eve. Here in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, they will take on Alabama Birmingham. They had to win their last two over Big Ten opponents. And they handled Northwestern 49 to 41 to make this the play in game in effect. And from 21 to nothing down, they knock off Michigan State, 41-38. And for the presentation, we go down to Alex Flanagan. All right, Dave, well, I'm with Executive Director of the Sheraton Hawaii Bulls, Jim Donovan. And Jim, you have a special presentation to make to June Jones and his Hawaii Warriors, Jim. June, June, what a great game. What a great way to finish the season. On behalf of the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, I'd like to extend an invitation for you to play in the 2004 Sheraton Hawaii Bowl on Christmas Eve. Deal. Thanks, Jimmy. Unbelievable win for our program. Uh, these kids, I can't tell you, we've gotten killed uh, two times on ESPN and to beat two Big Ten teams at the end. I mean, I can't say enough how proud I am of them. All right, Jim. Congratulations, yeah. Dave. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, buddy. Couldn't get a more typical effort out of a June Jones team. No total is too much for them to overcome, and college football's all-time passer. Tonight throws for 416 yards, four touchdowns, all to Chad Owens. And 41-38 is our final for Bill Curry, David Dory, Alex Flanagan, Dave Barnett, aloha, now to NFL's greatest moments. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Tradition of excellence rewards this season's most outstanding player. The 2004 Heisman Trophy presentation, Saturday, December 11th at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Capital One, mascot, true love, child. <laughs> Don't miss six straight days of great college football. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN. Hi, I'm John Shearer, CEO and founder of Video Professor. You know, after teaching people how to operate their computers for over 15 years now, I'm amazed that there are still people that don't have computer skills, like Windows, word processing, the internet, and email. If you're looking for that new job, or maybe it's just balancing your budget, or even helping your kids with homework, these aren't handy skills to have. These are essential. If you're having trouble learning the computer, I'm going to help you out with a free learning lesson of your choice from Video Professor. Let me show you how simple this is. You put the CD in your CD drive. The lesson plays just like a video on your computer screen. The best part about this offer, this is free. You just pay a small shipping and processing charge, and I'll even refund that if you're not satisfied with my product. It's free, the risk is free, so what do you got to lose? Try my product. To get your free computer learning CD, you must call now. Call 1-800-874-9138.
Everybody loves football for different reasons. For many, it's the just the nature of the game, the hard hits, the big blocks, spectacular catches. But football isn't just physical. It's a mental game as well. Coaches and players, they spend countless hours in the classroom studying plays and devising new ways to run them. Today, we're going to take a more scholarly look at the game, starting with the science and history of one of the game's most basic plays, the sprint right option. We are due for a dramatic finish of some sort. Late in the 1981 NFC Championship, the 49ers trailed the Cowboys 27 to 21. It was third and goal at the six. Earlier, head coach Bill Walsh faced a similar situation and the 49ers scored the game's first touchdown on a play called Sprint Right Option. Now, with a berth in Super Bowl 16 at stake, Walsh... As soon as you see the angle he's breaking, then just drop the ball up there. If you don't get what you want, you'll just throw it, simply throw the ball away. Okay. You know what I mean? Hold yeah. it, hold it, hold it. Not there. Away it goes. You're ready to go to Dwight. You got it. The stage was set for a milestone moment as the catch resulted from the play called Sprint Right Option. The final outlet for Joe. Joe was to sprint out and hit Freddie Solomon on what they so called pick play. This was a Paul Brown play from the early 50s. Otto Graham's athleticism made sprint right option an effective play for the Cleveland Browns. But in the late 60s, its creator, Paul Brown, was still perfecting it in Cincinnati. We used to call it Q8 option in the original West Coast or the North Ohio uh, River offense. The quarterback could just roll out and hit the guy in the flat. So, yeah, we know that play very well. He would put two tight ends in the game, and I would be the second tight end, and I would go on the outside and pick for either Isaac or Chip Myers. Tell Chip he's in now. He, he liked to use bigger receivers down on the goal line. Take you're in now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Many of Paul Brown's coaching disciples took the play with them. In Miami, Don Shula ran Q8 option with Bob Greasy. But it was one former Brown assistant in particular, Bill Walsh, who spread the gospel of sprint right option. People that uh, uh, were exposed to that play through the 49er system now is taking that play, and I'm, we have it, uh, Philadelphia has it, Kansas City has it. Um, you know, a number of teams have it. Sprint right option means that the quarterback is going to sprint. So in contrast to straight back in the pocket, he's going to sprint to the right or he could sprint to the left. Brett Farr, first time he's in a game, he audibles to it to the left. But that's Brett, you know, never been practiced. And obviously we didn't complete it, but, you know, it, it can go either way, but 99% of the time, the right-handers do it that way and the left-handers do it that way. Let's go red right, F left. Sprint left option on one, ready? Square it up, Jerry. Bill Walsh would never sprint to the left because he feels it's too difficult for a right-handed quarterback. Three, five, eighty! When he... And with the soft coverage, you're giving Orton an easier throw. If Purdue's not going to run the ball anyway, sit there in the zone coverage and take away those slant routes. They back off on the blitz. Four-man rush. Completion made. A Stanford inside the 20 to the 17-yard line of Indiana. A.C. Carter made the hit. James Bell's defense has stiffened in the red zone here. 
in this second half, they'll have to do that again. You see Indiana sitting back in his own coverage, but this was just a perfectly thrown ball. Stanford ran a nice route, squared it off in order to keep the defender away, but you can't throw it any better than Kyle Orton did. First down, Purdue's been here before and come up empty. Blitz coming. Orton lofting it over the middle and threw it away out of the end zone, incomplete. And they were bringing the kitchen sink on that one. The difference, though, they had press coverage. They didn't give the receivers the cushion. As you can see Cam Cameron there, you can see the intensity in his face. If you have any question how big a game this is to Cam and his program, Orton seeing press coverage, wasn't there, throws the ball away, knowing it's just first down. He's got three more downs. James Bell, the defensive coordinator, signaling in the play. Purdue scored in the first quarter with 13.06 to go. And they scored in the second quarter with 13.49 to go. They haven't scored since. I should say Indiana scored those two times in the first half. And it's been Sherrod Wallace that Purdue has picked on. Snap is fumbled, covered by Orton back near the 24-yard line. So a loss of about six or seven yards on that play. Wait, not only a loss, but unlike a penalty where you lose the yardage, this one counts to down. It doesn't look like Orton is ready for the ball to come up. No, he he's was surprised. Still, he's still calling out signals, and he's fortunate to get that ball back. Six Purdue fumbles today. They've lost two. They're facing third down, under two minutes to go in the game, trailing by six. You don't need to get it all. It's only third down. You've got two more downs. If it's not open deep, take the eight or nine yards, get the rest of it on fourth. Blitz coming. Incomplete. Pass thrown into the end zone. And Stanford guarded along the sidelines by Sherrod Wallace could not disengage to get into the left corner of the end zone. Joe Tiller wants a timeout. And he wants a hold on Sherrod Wallace. That's what he really wants more than anything else. Timeout for two. They have one timeout remaining. And look at Joe. He's watching again to see if he can pick it up. Well, there's certainly contact. Again, it's Sherrod Wallace they're picking on. You see double for trying to push him off. And I, I don't think you throw a flag. I, I don't think I don't you either. throw a flag. I, I, I think they had the right call there, which was a no call in that situation. Absolutely. You do not throw a flag at this point in this game. With it being 13-7, you make them earn it. And there was as much contact initiated yep. by Stanford as there was Wallace. Purdue. Now, Purdue with one timeout remaining. Let's take a look at the Outback Steakhouse outstanding back. It's not over yet, but Kyle Orton, what a second half he's had. He's thrown 61 passes for the game, completed 31 with the 263 yards and a touchdown. I don't believe he has an interception either. No. No interception. His first start as a true freshman, 61 attempts, no interception. You know, you know, Joe Tiller said, we just haven't been able to throw the football 60 times a game. That's what I'd like to do. Well, he may have found the quarterback who he could throw it 60 times with a game. Well, he, he struggled in the first half, and give Joe Tiller credit. He stuck with him, and he's paid off. But the biggest play of the game right now, when you go for everything on third down and 17 and you miss it, now you have to make the big play. They've got to get to the six-yard line to get a first down. Fourth down from the 24. Orton going over the top for Stratton, and it's incomplete. The defense is held again for Indiana. And they are a minute 22nd away from resting at the old Oaken Bucket from Purdue. When, it, when Purdue went for the big one on third down and didn't get it, you put Indiana in a position defensively, knowing that Purdue has to pick up 17 yards. They can blitz and make you go for the big play. And you see Cam knows what that incompletion right there means. Purdue's got one timeout left. All Indiana has to do, snap the ball three times, maybe run around a little bit with Randall L to take some time off the clock, and they're gonna get their first victory over Purdue in five years. Well, they're in the victory formation right now, and Randall L drops to a knee. Wayne, back again to that last point. When, when Purdue went for the touchdown on on third, it forced them to make it the big play, which allowed Indiana to blitz. Today's big 
Ten game is brought to you by Bex Light, Germany's lighter side. Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Red Roof Inn for affordable rates at over 350 inns nationwide. Call 800 Red Roof or book online at redroof.com. BMW test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. By Mobile Speed Pass, today's way to pay. The United States Army, an army of one. Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And by Bowflex, the home fitness machine that delivers real results. Cam Cameron and company, it's been a while since the old oaken bucket has been held here in Bloomington. And again, Randall L. drops to a knee. Down to a minute 16 to go in this game. Mobile speed pass drive of the game. Seven plays, 19 yards, and the Indiana defense was able to hold. Wayne, the game's not over, though, because there's just over 50 seconds. Indiana will have to snap the ball. There'll be another 25 set on the clock, and there could be, oh, maybe a 10-second differential here where Indiana may have to still punt the ball unless they run around and take more time off the clock, which doesn't look like they're going to do here. Randall L. drops back to a knee. Again, Purdue out of timeouts. Time melting away in this one. Indiana hasn't won the bucket since 1996 when they scored a 33-16 victory at Purdue. And the Boilermakers are going to give up the bucket. And that's it. There it is. For the first time in five years, the Indiana Hoosiers raise the old Oakton bucket. They have hung on to beat the Purdue Boilermakers 13 to 7. For Randy Wright, Jim Barber, and our entire ESPN Plus crew, it has been a pleasure and what a battle in Bloomington, Indiana. It's been a presentation of ESPN Plus. Thinking about painting your car? Stop thinking, do it. Mako's still offering the Ambassador Paint Service for only $189, the best economy paint service in America. How do we do it? Mako paints more cars than anyone. 12 million, still counting. And that's why we charge less than anyone. Our Ambassador Paint Service is only $189. Mako gives more value than anyone. What's value? Quality and price. For a great finish and a beautiful deal, call 1-888-MAKO-USA. Grand opening of FIM, the Christmas giant natural light Christmas tree. From tabletop to giant trees to 40 feet tall. Specially designed trees. More realistic, quality pre-lit Christmas trees. With Noma, stay lit, or GE light. Take it out of the box and their lights are on. Six and a half foot natural light tree. Pre-lit with Noma light, $79. Over 60 styles of the newest fiber optic decoration. Trees, wreaths, poinsettias, holiday scenes, snowman, Santa, and so much more. Sparkles decorations with ever-changing color lights. 32 inch fiper optic Christmas tree, $17.99. At FIM, the Christmas giant's grand opening. Also, Downers Grove, Bloomingdale, Chicago at Board City, and now open in Palatine and Crystal Lake. You can store all this at public storage and move in for just $10. You can store all this at public storage and still move in for just $10. No matter how much space you need, just $10 gets you in. Call 1-800-44-STORE today for a convenient location near you. Now, family night can last an entire weekend. This Thanksgiving weekend, let Blockbuster entertain your entire family for under $10. Get any three movies, even DVDs, plus popcorn for only $9.99. Rent any movies you want, even hot new releases like these. The Grinch, a classic Dr. Seuss tale. Planet of the Apes, starring Mark Wahlberg. And Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, with Angelina Jolie. Any three movies and popcorn for just $9.99, only at Blockbuster. Should your cell phone be your only phone? Monday on the CBS2 News at 10.
We now join our regularly scheduled programming already in progress. To make that statement, most programs, they look for a star at either quarterback, running back, or wide receiver. When you look at Tennessee, they have all the pieces to be explosive offensively. They have two wide receivers in Dante Stallworth and Kelly Washington. They're as good as any in the country. They have a 1,000-yard rusher in Travis Stevens. But the guy that makes it all come together is quarterback Casey Clawson. Talking with Coach Philip Fulmer, he says what makes Casey so special is he plays within the structure of the offense and he's playing mistake free football. Vanderbilt's Woody Woodenhofer will step down at season's end. His last chance to beat Tennessee Andre right here in Knoxville. Just three seasons ago he was five and three. Thought he would turn the corner with the program. He, but it didn't happen. You look at Tennessee, excuse me, Vanderbilt offensively they've got to rely on their quarterback Greg Zoman, the career passing leader in just about every category. He'll spread the field and run the no huddle offense which has averaged 400 yards per game this season. Vandy, they're as good as anyone offensively. You throw the rivalry factor into this game, hey, anything can happen. This series dates back to 1892. Tennessee with a commanding lead. Last season, however, very close. 28-26 the final. Tennessee over Vanderbilt. There's the head coach of Tennessee, Philip Fulmer, 10th year as the head coach here in Knoxville. During that time, very impressive. 92 and 19, including a national championship back in 1998 at game time for late November 71 degrees however there is rain in the forecast last week or last year a two-point game if you look at the last six games between these two teams four of those decided by seven points or less Set to play here in Knoxville, holiday weekend, but yet uh, Neyland Stadium near capacity. Vanderbilt won the toss and chose to receive. Alex Walls will kick away. Tennessee, eight and one on the season, sixth ranked nationally. Vanderbilt at two and seven. Winless in conference play. They have it teed up at the 35 yard line and ready to go. Ronald Hatcher and Jason Mathena back deep 